And there we go. The transitions are now snappy because I took all the transitions out. But <laughs> it's like we haven't done this for a while. It's like I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. Welcome to Legends of the Drowned Isles, a homebrew D&D 5th Ed campaign. I'm the host and DM. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. I have my collection of players here for this alt game in Legends of the Drowned Isles. We're playing a different scenario uh, just because one of our regular players can't make it on this this uh, at-home edition. Uh, but how about my players introduce themselves, beginning with Silas. Uh, hi, my name is Pat. I'm playing Silas Marsh, uh, human illusionist. Hi, uh, my name is Marie. I am playing uh, Annie, who is also human and a rogue. Hey, I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medrak, half-orc cleric. I don't know why, but it didn't sound convincing. And it is also human. Yes, also human. Well, Not me. Definitely to, uh, human. <laughs> to catch folks up a little bit on what happened in the last scenario, because I think most of us forgot, including me, which is why I wrote it down. After, yeah, having, after having defeated and run off a group of bandits, the group was encouraged by the ghost Sedona to investigate the innermost chamber of the abandoned temple possibly also encouraged by the GM. This turned out to be a trap containing a test, presumably for acolytes of the temple. After working through the mysterious clues and puzzles, they discovered that the large statue moved, revealing a deep spiraling downward stairway. At the bottom, a hallway led to a glowing green and purple room, a massive amethyst geode glowing with gentle energy. At the center of the geode sat a tremendous creature, a being with the upper torso of an intelligent, stern, strong woman, and the body of a lion. This is Cathron, a gynosphinx. The ghostly Sedona hovered beside her, seemingly pleased to see the group. Cathron welcomed them, and explained that this realm is the place where she watches over the last vestiges of a power leaving the world. Exentite. Ex ex My apologies. <laughs> It was dusty in the geode, apparently. Uh, mm -hmm. The elements of power are attracted, uh, or rather the elements of the, of the loss of power are attracting a being only referred to as the shadow, which you've kind of encountered elements of before. Catherine seemed to know more about the group standing before her than they had said and referred in passing to a prophecy when the group with the group having demonstrated their skills in cutting and dealing with the bandits and passing the test, Catherine asks the group to help her find and retrieve these power vessels. She explained that she cannot leave the geode, but her vision extends further. The group agrees, and Catherine manifests three magical items to help them. A pair of bracers that appear to have amethysts, amethyst woven over strands of pure silver, a brooch of solid amethyst encasing three wave-like curls of silver, and a large stone embedded with shards of amethyst, which can be used to summon a fearsome ally. Gatherum tells them that she will visit them when she is able to tell them what she needs them to do as best as her vision will allow. And after that uh, time, folks also leveled up. So congratulations. Welcome to level four. Uh, eventually I get to say welcome to level seven. If you're an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. fan, that'll mean something mm -hmm. to you. Uh, however, um, those three items as well, uh, if you haven't already decided who should have each of them, you're welcome to. Um, the, uh, the brooch and the, uh, let me see, the brooch and the bracers are attunement. Uh, the other one is not, so no one specifically has to have it, but it is a rather large thing to carry around. Um, you can either decide to put it somewhere or you can decide uh, uh, that if you're going to carry it, it it's a rather uh, rather ugly thing to carry to lug around. Medrick might be able to carry it in a backpack whenever we go on adventures anyway. Yeah. Um, and to clarify, the, the, the stone is actually a stone of summoning a Zorn, or as you may remember from the previous campaign, does anybody remember well, what they were called? Glumpkins. Glumpkins in the previous campaign. Uh, because the person who encountered them had no idea what they were. Just knew them as things that grabbed onto you. 
also, um, I had suggested there was a bit of downtime involved in this particular time. Um, I think each of you had something in particular you were looking to do, more or less. Annie was looking to relax. <laughs> uh, Medrick, I believe you were looking to go to the temple. Yeah. And Silas, you had a bit of business to do. So we'll begin with uh, we'll begin with Annie actually, uh, and I'm going to uh, make something available to you in your journal as you're relaxing one night in your room. You hear a vigorous tapping on your window. Your window being on the second floor, this is somewhat unexpected. How do you approach the window? Um, I go over calmly. Okay. Um, but I do always have my dagger on me, so hand is on dagger. Creeping over towards the window, you see a rather large crow outside. It seems to have something tied to its leg. As you approach the crow, it doesn't seem to be nervous about you. If anything, it seems to be cocking its head, curious and yet insistent somehow, looking at you directly uh, or rather as a bird does, kind of with one eye and then turning and with the other eye, uh, looking you up and down when seemingly satisfied it presents its leg, around which is wrapped a small piece of parchment, which is held together in the center uh, by a small strange ring with a a, uh, a bumpy uh, uh, gem, or bumpy, actually it's probably painted metal, actually, on the side. There is a letter attached, and I think I'm, uh, unless you want to read the letter out loud, I'm going to read the letter out loud. Yeah, by all means. <laughs> um, because it's not, uh, it's not what I would call spoilery. I put the letter in your, uh, in your journal. Um, yes. And I will also put the ring in your journal in a second. The ring is a familiar hand and one you had not necessarily expected to see anytime soon. The letter begins and I will, I will attempt some sort of voice on this. We'll see how this works out. But you have a voice in your head which is probably more accurate than mine. Dearest A, I'm glad to hear you're no longer at sea. What a miserable time that must have been. I've never seen it necessary to leave dry land, and not for love nor money. I've seen the sorts of men and women who take to the seas down by the docks, and I cannot imagine any of them holding a decent conversation, or a decent anything for that matter. It sounds like a dreadful place you've ended up, however. I've never heard of Aelthwater, but I'm going to make a special trip to the lore master tomorrow and ask about it. Don't worry, dear, I'll be discreet. I'll say it was a name some merchant used for a type of seaweed or something, and I'm merely curious. I'm sure that doddering old fool won't catch on. What presses me to write to you urgently at the moment, besides the fact that my heart swoons to hear you are away from the ravages of pirates and sea monsters, is to let you know that the search has begun in earnest. When it was discovered that you were not, as we had told them, attending riding lessons and etiquette instructions with Baroness, and you see a little scribble kind of crossed out and the name replaced Baroness Windbag and her three daughters smelly, nosy, and whiny. Oh, I feel so naughty for having written that on paper. Uh, please promise me you'll destroy this letter, my dear, and not let it serve as evidence for my execution. Oh, but they have been awfully hard on. Uh, let me not name him here, but just to say that Captain W. barely held on to his title and has been commanded to seek you out. So far he has limited his search to the island, but I fear that his dogged pursuit of you will uncover other evidence before too long that you have taken to a boat. He's employed a mage of some rather distasteful but highly creditable talent to track you down. You may be wondering how I came to get you this letter. I've taken some of the reserve you set aside for me and employed the services of a druid. She seems to be a rather ambitious elf, keen to find some normalcy in her life after the... Uh, I hesitate to write on it, lest it be nothing more than my own imagination, but I have seen evidence of it in others. While you 
parents have said nothing publicly about it. I have heard others whisper about it. I am uncertain as how to describe it, but it has become referred to in pubs as the Great Confusion. What a name, but in truth I cannot describe it with any more depth except to say that it feels like I have misplaced something important and cannot find it and have no idea what it was. The uncertainty is rippling outward, but I am afraid your disappearance has made it somewhat more tense here. I've done what I can to assure them that you are well, that you have a plan, and that I know nothing of the details. So far as I've said, it has been true, although I'm less certain of any specific plan you might have had. So far they have kept us quiet as much as possible, although your sister has had to be confined to her rooms about complaining, after complaining loudly about how you get to do, go on adventures, and she does not. I believe that if they have no confirmation of your existence for a month or two, they will set at least a few of the seven to search for you. There's murmur of a rebellion, however, so they may be distracted by that. I used a bit more of the reserve to purchase this ring the letter is encased with. It was more expensive than I would have liked, but I am assured by the druid that it will do what I wish it to. When you wear the ring, you will be given protection from those who would seek to read your thoughts, should suspicions arise. I used it myself once, as a test, and it seemed to work as requested. Please wear this and keep us both safe. I shall be here looking after your sister as best I can and trying not to fret too much. But please send me word of your travels when you can. I will admit to a bit of curiosity as to what you've seen even if it frightens my dear heart. Who knows? Perhaps you'll finally meet that special someone who will take you for who you are as opposed to the boorish suitors your parents have made you dance with. Love, H. And indeed, in your journal you will find the ring. Nice. It is an attunement item as well. Okay. The crow seems to be hanging around for a minute on the windowsill, almost looking expectant. I'll write up a quick response. And I'll literally just ask it if I, like, pr present it to see if I can tie it on. Okay. It presents its leg, although it does caw at you. Yeah, uh, so I'll, I'll do that and I'll, I'll give it a silver. <laughs> <laughs> it tries to, to, to bite down on the silver. Seems dissatisfied with it and kind of throws it aside. Um, I'll go grab some, like, just some grain or something. Okay. It seems a little bit more, a lot more satisfied with the, the, the grain than the silver and kind of uh, uh, gobbles it down, caws at you a couple of times, looks at you and looks at the, the note that you've attached to its leg. Um, it looks to kind of get confirmation that you want it to leave. Yep. And it nods to you as well, and then flies off into the night. Okay, I need to open another window. Da, 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 pardon me. Because I wanted to see if there was additional possible... Uh, downtime roll for you for relaxing. I believe there was one for just uh, relaxation. There we go. You have no ongoing conditions. I don't think that's necessarily it, but uh, yep, so you have no long long acting diseases or poisons, thankfully. Uh yeah, so you basically take the week. What what sort of relaxation do you do? Are you going to go to the town? Are you just going to keep to yourself? Do you want to practice um, a little bit in the, in the woods? I think I would mostly keep to myself, but I might go for like a walk and okay. do a little bit of sightseeing. Um, get a feel for the place. Okay. As you walk around town... Um, it is the the industry here is largely based around fishing, and you get kind of used to the the ins and outs. You've been here for a little while already, but um, as you get a chance to kind of relax and take in the the, the sights, 
used to the, the, the in and out of the swell of the, the water that flows up all the way to where they've actually built that barrier right by the, the water uh, because the, the tide is so high, it comes all the way in and would threaten the town potentially uh, if it ever swelled too far. But the fishermen uh, come in and out in their uh, small or rather wide squat boats a large contingent coming from um, the sort of western side of the uh, beach uh, who uh, bring in a significantly larger bounty, uh, barrels and barrels of fish coming from that side, whereas the rest seem to be bringing in modest catches most days. There's also numerous large ships that are anchored just out in the distance, uh, and when the tide swells high, they come in, unload their cargo. If they're lucky enough, they get a cargo loaded back on and to sail out immediately. If they're not lucky enough, they sail back out to the deeper part of the water and hover there waiting for cargo to be delivered. Down by the water, there are a number of, uh, of uh, well, the, there's the dock. And by the dock side, there's a number of large um, uh, warehouses where cargo from inland is brought in and stored there or cargo from the sea is brought and stored there um, and you kind of it's it's a sketchier part of town especially at night uh, during the day it's bustling with industry at night um, there is a couple of small pubs that are uh, specifically catering to seagoing folk uh, and they tend to be rowdier and louder um, in fact um, the uh, Many of the people in the town, in the center part of the town, consider them to be the most distasteful part um, and sometimes refer to them as stinking of the sea, which is ironic because everything here smells of the sea. Uh, moving on to Medric. Yep. I believe you were going to seek out the Flame Keeper? Yep. It's a Nora Tidewell, right? That's right. Yeah. Yay, notes. <laughs> <laughs> you head over to the uh, to the beacon, uh, easily seen from just about anywhere in town, a relatively plain stone building, more of a casing really, around the massive pillar which contains the ever flame, um, which burns as a as a beacon to all. Um, Flamekeeper Tidewell is uh, a human. Uh, probably in her 50s, maybe even her 60s, but she's one of these people. I've written her here, um, my RP notes, think of a tougher version of Judy Dench. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> if you can kind of imagine Judy Dench set in, uh, in uh, uh, Mad Max almost, uh, just that <laughs> kind of, she's been through a lot, she's grizzled, her, her um, face and arms and hands are just a, a, a mass of burn scars. She's but seen some shit. <laughs> she she definitely has, but at the same time, um, there's a certain almost pattern to the scars, almost as though that um, she's accepted them and they became a part of her. And to, if she did not have the scars, she would not look natural. She would not look normal. There is, and she seems to 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 have no pain from them as well, um, but has uh, you know thick calloused hands as well, um, and. She, you know, dresses modestly, kind of in uh, in uh, yellow robes that have sort of red edgings on them. Her choice of the um, of the symbol of Ignis uh, is the single torch in in the moon in the moonlight that she uses, uh, and has just a simple um, uh, a simple amulet that she wears around her neck, uh, but it seems to be well worn. And as she speaks to you, you do see her kind of uh, rubbing it un uh, subconsciously. Um, and it's, it seems to be warm. You can actually see underneath it where her robes are. The robes themselves look a little darkened uh, as though the, the, uh, the amulet itself emits heat enough to darken cloth. Um, but for her, it's a, it's a sort of a constant reminder. Uh, as Medric, like as Medric notices that, is his own amulet also feeling a little warmer? Or? Not so much that you've noticed. No, um, being being metal, it probably holds the heat that sometimes surrounds you, 
um, but it doesn't seem to emit any heat uh, of its own, not at the moment anyway. Describe what your amulet looks like or what your, your symbol looks like. It would be uh, the one that looks... Uh, crap, I can't just pull up the picture. Um, it's the uh, four-pointed star with a flame on top of it. For viewers, it looks like this. There we go. Because I still have the sticky note with me. You, you did literally just pick up the picture on the sticky yeah. note <laughs> and hand it over. Um, one of the things about the Church of Ignis, uh, that were the, the, the followers of Ignis, um, the Ignians tend to be an individualistic uh, cult, if you will. While there is collective practice and there is teachings, a lot of it is how you express the flame, how the flame burns through you. And so the symbols, while they have common elements such as flame and they have common colors such as yellow and red, they are often highly stylized to the person themselves and sometimes change throughout their entire uh, lifetime. You've, you've met some who, um, probably your earliest teachers, who at one point had taken off the symbol that they had shattered it and then made a new one actually they probably melted it and then made a new one uh, nice. out of it uh, but the the uh you've met briefly with tidewell when you first came here um she seemed to be somewhat enigmatic at first uh, but seems a little bit more friendly to you you go in and uh you notice that she has a burning brazier in front of her in which something seems to be on fire she sees you come in, nods, and then casually hands you something and says, please hold this for a little while, would you? Oh, and my, my oh. alarms are going off telling me it's time to wake up. <laughs> uh, we are on the ball today, folks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, trying this early business, it's crazy. But hands you something casually and says, hold this. Uh, and before you even realize what you're holding, you realize it's on fire. Uh, and you're holding yep. a, a, uh, a flaming bit of wood. I'm just going to take deep breaths and focus on the fire, not on the whatever burning sensation may be happening in my hands. So to Medrek, it's going to be like, almost like when I'm cast casting a spell and getting burned at the same time, this is the same thing. No problem. Kind of. And you can feel... The, Ignis is just giving me a handshake. You can feel the, the, the warmth uh, kind of flowing up your arms. You can feel the, the skin tightening where the flames are licking it. You've not necessarily gotten used to this, but at the same time, is not an unfamiliar sensation. And she continues to, to work and, uh, uh, you know, kind of consulting some book, uh, makes a, uh, a, a prayer, calling upon Ignis to, to uh, concentrate the, uh, the flame. And you actually notice the flame in the piece of wood uh, start to die down a little bit. And you can see the wood actually has a bit of a, of a statuesque form. Um, and then she sort of looks over at you and smiles and says, thank you, thank you very much. There's a kind of a gravelly voice, probably way too much smoke inhalation, as you might expect from fire people. Uh, and she takes it from you. Uh, she does not flinch at all uh, when she grasps, grasps the, the flaming uh, wood and sets it aside on the stone workbench, it's, it continues to burn. And in fact, as you continue with your conversation, you notice that it does not stop burning. Uh, but also, the wood is not consumed. Um, cool. You look down to your own, your own burned hands and your singed clothing, um, and uh, she seems to look, look down on it, and for a moment you think, oh, she's going to heal it, and then you sort of simply nods and, and says, good work, good work, you're learning. I'll just nod back at her. And in my mind, I'm, I'm just going to be like, well, I'll just heal that up later. <laughs> Weirdly enough, while you, you, you can feel the, the burning, it is much more distant, almost comforting. Um, although you do see the, the, the blackened uh, streaks in your skin and you can feel that this sort of tightening of, of the skin around your hands where you were holding that. Uh, but nonetheless, you feel kind of a full body warmth almost. Um, and you have the, the blessing of Ignis uh, for mm -hmm. the, the next week, uh, you will be able to, uh, let me see, actually, I should have written that down cause I had it in mind and then I just completely forgot it. I will, I will tell you what the blessing of Ignis is later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cause I meant to, I meant to write that down. Gotta write things down so they get burnt in your memory. Burnt. So to speak. Yes. 
Um, the yeah, no, it's I, I'm, I'm not. If I push that, it's not going to work. For those of you who are watching at home, which I don't think anybody is at the moment, I even forgot to put the chat room up. Uh, <laughs> so apologies if you're screaming at the at the screen and I haven't got that up. Uh, or for those of you watching on YouTube later, we have switched our our playing time to a morning to avoid the evil uh, ignis in the sky, essentially to avoid some of the uh, the heat. Uh, but it also means uh, mornings. Oh man. Um, did you have questions uh, that you wanted to ask the flame keeper or anything that you were looking to know? Just a few, like just chatter mainly because there aren't many followers of Ignis around. And whenever it came out that I was a follower of Ignis, the response I usually got, it's like, well, why do you put up with getting burnt? Like, why do that to yourself? What kind of deity does that to people? And what's the best way to address those questions when strangers ask that way I can like spread the word of Ignis without with, with greater efficiency, basically fire. She says fire. <laughs> <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> uh, and she kind of nods knowingly. As you can tell, there are not that many at the temple right now. There have been some who've come through and made their, um, made their pilgrimages. I hope you'll be around for a little while. But yes, it can be difficult. Ignis is powerful. Arguably. And I've had this argument with many a, a theologian, usually after a couple of pints. Mm -hmm. Arguably, Ignis is the most powerful deity that has ever existed and will ever exist. All life is owed to Ignis. And yet, death also is owed to Ignis. Ignis is distant, and must be so. To be too close to Ignis would be to be consumed. And yet, we who walk this path wish to walk closer and closer to that power. And, by being granted some of that power, can shine a light in the darkest places, can fight back those who would oppress and those who would terrify. We are the beacon in the dark. We are the ones who will go where others are too afraid to go. That is part of Ignis's path. Now, as a Kamar, we have a particularly difficult but also extraordinary uh, future ahead if you continue your, your pathway. I and fully intend to continue. Good, good, good. But I will tell you, it will be difficult. You will become the living flame. An avatar of Ignis made flaming glory. You will burn bright on the battlefield, but you must also burn bright in the community, and you must also burn bright in the hopes, hearts, and souls of living mortal beings. It will be a lot that people will look up to you, and many will fear you, and that fear is useful, because you will drive out others' fear by making those that would that would make them afraid run. But you must also remember that you will need friends, and you will need allies. And while Ignis's might is powerful, it is, she kind of looks around guiltily, not the only power that exists. And she kind of steps back and Looks a little thought. We've learned about another power. What do you know about the shadow? Mm. Sorry, cat just called me. <laughs> the shadow is kind of like a cat. It strikes out <laughs> of nowhere. No. Uh, <laughs> if there is one thing that Ignis exists to drive out, it is shadow but I think you are referring to something more specific. I do not know of a being called the Shadow, if that's what you are asking, but there are many beings who play in the dark and who would feed on the, the hopes and dreams and fears of others. Perhaps that is what you've encountered. Can you tell me more about it? Yeah, um, I'll relay the information about uh, the elven ghost and how he drove the Shadow and saved the ghost, or save uh, Sedona. Interesting. Something has changed. I I cannot put my finger on it. There was a fight, a war, 
fought not just on this mortal plane, but in the skies above. Ignis fought and must have succeeded, for we are still here. But I do not know who Ignis was fighting. I, I thought I remembered, but it slips by me. And everybody forgot. I knew I was in a war. Then I was on a ship heading here. It's like everybody forgot something important. I don't know what it was or what happened. I spend much time contemplating the flame. In it, I see the beauty of Ignis. In every candle, I see his grace. In every sunbeam, I see his hope. In every hearth, I see care. In every torch, I see a beacon. But the flames, well, they seem to burn a little brighter. They seem to be a little more cold. I do not know what this means yet. But I may, I may have some things for you to investigate. If you do, please let me know. And we've also been contacted by another entity, I suppose, to possibly investigate this shadow. If this shadow is also an enemy of Ignis, I can let you know what we're up to. Yes. I have found some good allies so far. Annie and Silas, you might have seen. Well, surely you've seen Silas entertaining outside. Silas... Marsh. Yes. And she looks... Her eyes narrow a little bit. Be careful of that one. You've it not been like here. Fellow. You've not been here long. But be wary of the Marsh clan. They are powerful. And do not walk in the light as we do. I will not say that they are... Just be wary of them. I'll just nod very gently. <laughs> or not gently, but like very quickly. Because I mean, Medric likes Silas. <laughs> Hasn't met the rest of the clan, but Silas is good. <laughs> I sense... I sense a need for us more than ever. I feel that the world is shifting. You've heard people say the great confusion, I think people are calling it. Mm -hmm. I feel that the world is shifting into more shadow. I do not know if it is the same creature you faced, but it may you be. You say shadow. <laughs> <laughs> I would ask of you because you are younger, and while the flame of Ignis burns well in you, it has not... When she holds up her, her hand and the, the lines of, of uh, scars, uh, burn scars, and the sort of the rough surfaces are clearly visible. Ignis's service has not marked you as it has me. While come, they come to me for some things, blessings... Uh, funerals, sometimes a bit of guidance or healing, most do not. But I need more disciples here. I would ask that in your travels you find ways to bring more to the temple, people who would be worthy of it. There will be very few, and maybe none, who can take up the path of Kamar as you have, but acolytes, beacons, lamplighters, maybe even another flame keeper to take my place someday. Can you do that? I certainly can, or at least I'll give it my best effort. Why are there so few of us? Fire is seen as dangerous, and fire untamed destroys. But every home has a heart. If people question you, tell them. But fire makes food edible. It makes a home warm. If not treated with respect, it can burn you. It can be unfeeling, burning everything that can be burned. But as servants of the Everflame, you learn how, at first, to ignore that pain inflicted without malice. 
and then later to absorb it. And of course, as Kainmar, to become it. Be the light in the darkness. For I fear that much darkness will be coming. I will be the light in the darkness. Good. The rest of the time is spent uh, running through some prayers. She leads you through some ceremonies, um, which would also account for perhaps some of the spells that you have learned, some of the, the rituals you have learned as well. Have you make a, uh, a religion check, please? Okay. Roll 20, where are you? Nope. Oh, religion is int. Fuck. Ooh, okay. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm feeling like uh, too much pressure from... It's like, okay, I'm going to recruit some acolytes. I'm not, I'm not the most charismatic guy in the world, but I'll do my best. It's like, she really has faith in me. I have to not fuck this up. Ah, anxiety. <laughs> but he's not showing that outwardly, but I guess uh, in that role it shows. <laughs> Make an insight check. Insight. Four. Okay. That's not int. Much better. Okay. She doesn't say anything about it. But you're pretty sure the flame keeper is picking up on some of that uh, that anxiety, that that difficulty you're having. You're going through the rituals, you're going through the prayers, and you are able to establish the connection with Ignis. You are able to bring forth the flame as ne as needed, and some of the other things. But a lot of the esoteric elements of it, a lot of the way that she explains how to tap into that essence or what it truly means, seems to just move beyond you, washes over you like so much flame, leaving only a small impact and not not seeping into the, the tissue of your mind. And you also get the feeling that she knows this and she's not saying it. She's being very, very kind about it in that sense. Uh, however, she does at the end of the lessons uh, tell you to come back for more lessons. Uh, will do. That, that only, time, only time will truly allow you to to understand your place in the world to be able to fully come to the full flame and brightness we know that lives within you understood i will not give up all right now for silas how's silas doing today silas is on mute mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh pat has a question sure. um we got paid by the farmers. How much was that? Oh, wow. Uh, do I have that note on hand? That's a good question. Um, I do have a note like uh, from a name, Catherine, that we had a satchel with stuff like 300 GP worth of temple items. So I don't, I don't know if we divided that. But the farm, I don't know. I don't think we sold that, but I do have, we get a couple of GP and food. She will uh, send us some things. Yeah. Okay. So probably if it's okay with Annie and Medrick, uh, Silas could take the uh, items to be sold since he knows the merchants here. Yeah. Are there any items I recognize? Like. Yeah. Are there any that I recognize either? Any that are like Ignis related. I mean, you can both make religion rolls. I'm pretty sure there's no Ignis items in this. Oh, I have. Um, by the way, who took the, uh, the the brooch and the bracers? I think I took the brooch, if you guys are okay with that. Yeah, sure. Uh, up to Medric, which uh, whoever, uh, if he wants them, I mean, they don't really work with uh, armor, but they'd work when you're unarmored. Yeah, I'm usually wearing armor, though, so it wouldn't do much for me, I think. So the, the non-religious people have a better idea what that these are. Um, for both uh, uh, Annie and Silas... Uh, oh, sorry. 
I only rolled the second one because I couldn't find the first one, I think. No, my first one was a five. So oh, okay. I crapped it. I missed that one. Oh. All right. So for, for uh, first of all, for Medric, there's a lot of blues and some silvers in here, and they're just not the colors you'd associate with, with Ignis at all. Um, yeah. In fact, to your your eye, they almost feel like they're lifeless and dull and boring. Yeah, well, they're worth uh, money at least. Um, to you, Annie, they look like they're high quality. Uh, and uh, you notice a, a theme kind of running throughout many of them. This The f familiar theme that the, the other items have as well, the sort of swirls of silver, the sort of uh, wave-like patterns. There's a lot of aquamarine-type colors. There's a lot of teals. There's a lot of, of blues, a, a bit of silver. So they are all, all definitely from the same, uh, the same religion. And you also recognize that the the two items that you or the three items, well, two items really, the brooch and the uh, bracers, follow the same sort of theme. They were probably created for members of a religion or or. Uh, of a of the past uh, element, and you also uh, do see symbolic resonance with what was in the the puzzle room as well, with the way that it was laid out, uh, a lot of it reflecting the sea. Um, for I'm not sure why you're rolling strength there, uh, Silas. But uh, I was I was trying to remember to uh, update the character, and I forgot. So that was me accidentally hitting oh. strength instead of. Uh... <laughs> Uh, for you, Silas, uh, they look to be valuable. There's definitely some silver in there. Um, you think some of the nautical themes might go well here. Um, there's definitely some traders, though, that, that you know uh, who would be more interested in taking these and selling them at the bigger city, uh, which means you won't get quite the price you'd like for them here, uh, but uh, you, they, they, they have some interest. Uh, I'll have you make a... I mean uh, Yep. I mean, what, with what I noticed, I would mention, and from what I noticed of the economic state of this place, I don't think we're going, uh, I will mention, I don't think we're going to get what these are worth here. No, there's not a lot of money in this town. No, to, to be fair, there is a fair amount of money in this town, but most people don't have it. It's all in one place. <laughs> <laughs> As you kind of see the 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 baron's uh, chateau way up high on the hill which looks out over everything there are also a number of of uh houses uh, within the city which are are fairly well to do uh mostly of those who are the the people who who manage the trade they're the ones with the appropriate deals and, and a lot of trade going back and forth as a port town um it is one of the ways that in uh in city or in rather in island uh, wealth and goods gets transferred off of the island. Uh, there is raw ore, for example, that's mined from the the mountain nearby by the dwarves that gets shipped out this way. Um, however, um, there's no haggling skill, but there is a persuasion skill. So, Silas, if you want to take the lead on selling this stuff, you can roll that and see. Sure. Uh... Yeah, I'm just trying to make sure because... Yeah, I forgot to bring out the level four character, so uh, none of these sheets have my updated stuff, but I don't think persuasion was affected, so. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, 13 is what it is. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right, so you... I'm thinking, actually, we might get a better deal by, tr by using them indirect trade instead of selling them first but uh uh in, do it. indirect trade for something in particular you mean yeah like i mean um when dad was working the craft uh, circuit he would get a lot more stuff by trading bowls for pieces of art or whatever than he would if he had sold the bowl and then tried to buy it with the proceeds uh, people often trade something more if they don't have to go uh if it's a direct trade so if we've got like a nice pair of candlesticks we might trade that with the the blacksmith for something or whatnot but uh well, it is an interesting theory 
Um, however, uh, based on the persuasion roll, um, you find someone who's willing to buy them. He's, he'll buy the whole lot for 200 which you know that they indicated was probably uh, worth more than that. Yeah. Um, or you can hold on to them, but then you have to find a different uh, a buyer. Um, well, I'll tell him I have to talk to my associates first. And then I'll go, I'll go to the inn and ask them, "Do you okay with two hundred? They're oh, probably worth three hundred, but what's that? We can probably get a better deal if we go to the city. Yeah, we're not starving, so we don't have to sell them right away. Okay, um, then I'll probably split it up then and see if we can get three piles of roughly equivalent things because. Uh, I would like to get some stuff, but okay. I'll just do my share. Um, let's see. I wish I had a character sheet in front of me. Let me see here. Uh, just have you make a, um, uh, let's call it an investigation roll to figure out the a roughly equal part. Okay. There we go. Yeah, you're able to, able to figure out roughly what the, the equivalent of, of 100 gold pieces worth of things. Uh, there's a few small gems and a few things making them more valuable. Others have a little more silver presenting. Some are just beautiful art objects. There's one uh, which is a small statue of a woman with wings. Not entirely dissimilar to the statue, the large statue you used as the opening. Uh, but this one, the wings are actually spread wide. And you can see that her feet have actually got uh, claws on them. Uh, and that particular yeah. one is, is worth, you think, a fair amount of money, but it has no adornments, it has no jewelry, it, it's made of, of probably marble. It feels heavy for its for its size, uh, but well carved. Okay, uh, basically I'll split it three ways, and then, uh, yeah, if we can get to the city, then uh, we might be able to find a better buyer, but uh, right now I need to uh, support the family and get a few things. Okay, so you are selling off your portion? Mm-hmm. Okay. And you'll get 80 gold for the for the 100 gold portion. Okay. I don't remember what I had before. i got to track down what it was. I'll put 80 in there for now. Um, and then, yeah, he'll go and sell it. And, uh, okay. The, uh, yeah. the, the person you're dealing with, why don't we name him? Uh, is it a him? I guess it's a him. Um, Felix. He's uh, an import exporter. You know that he he has things that go out on boats. He also picks up things. He does make regular trips to the city himself um, with some of his goods. Uh, the city being the actual city, like uh, Pitajun, being better part of a day travel. Um, it's by wagon anyway. Cool. Um, uh, yeah, he would have done that one day. Um, We're going to abstract this. It's not day by day. Yeah. But... Yeah, yeah. No, I just mean that that would have been done early on. Okay. Um, at some point during the week, uh, probably he'll, he'll he'll actually just be doing the making money thing. Uh, okay. Downtime action during the week. But uh, at one point... Uh, he'll meet up with uh, Annie and Medrick uh, for lunch, uh, and he'll have a small boy with him. You're going to be at the Three Bells? <laughs> yeah, might as well. Uh, so meet up with, up. Uh, with uh, Silas. As soon as Silas enters the room, um, you hear a cooing from the bar as uh, one of the bells uh, sees this child. Well, how, you Probably have, be, have him up on his shoulders. Okay. And he uh, walk into the doorway. Whoops, didn't realize it was that tall. Sorry. <laughs> Clunk. I'm, I'm five, six. It probably puts the kid up to a normal height. <laughs> Describe um, this child, please. Yeah, I have a picture of him somewhere, but not on this computer. And I don't think I can show it on the Roll20 anyways. Um, Yes, he's about three years old, uh, has blonde hair, 
uh, and is probably giggling. Um, and uh, Silas will walk over to the table and then uh, uh, you probably set him down on the table. Uh, so he's, he's standing there and uh, he says, uh, Nikki, this is uh, Annie and Medrick. Annie, Medrick, this is my son, Nicodemus. Kind of hi, Nikki. Waves. Oh, and hi, Sam, too. He's like, uh, I, like how you put him down on, I like how you put him down on the table. Are we having kids for lunch now? Or <laughs> uh, He gets to talk to you from a like, face-to-face height this way. Uh, he'd sit down and probably put him on his lap, get ready to eat. Um, oh, okay, don't worry. That was a joke. We're not going to eat you. <laughs> yeah. he's just looking wild eyed um, uh, scoots away from Medrick <laughs> when we were at uh, when we were talking with um, and he, he'll just say it fairly lowly Catherine I said that there was something that I could not uh, there's someone I could not leave behind. This is him. And he tussle his hair dumb. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that makes sense. Sandy comes yeah. over from yeah. the bar uh, and puts down a, uh, a uh, well, what would Medrick have ordered to, to eat? Uh, probably, what, what time is it? Is it lunch? or It's lunchtime. Half a page. A quarter of a cow. Is a half a pig about the size of the child? Yeah. Like a hamburger, but like this wide and with three layers of patties. <laughs> the fisherman <laughs> special. Bacon. Yes. And a little and a little side salad. <laughs> Garnish. <laughs> well, she comes over with, with that. What would Annie have ordered? Um, she would have probably ordered something lighter. Like a salad and some chicken or something. So she's got a salad with a garnish of chicken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, she sets down those and a couple of of, uh, of mugs of uh, a sweet ale and hands a small mug, you know, it's about that that big, uh, to the the child and something sweet for the little child too. Um, Not ale, hopefully. <laughs> oh, of course it is, and she winks at Silas. Um, you can see that it's milk. Um, the child takes it with both hands and starts sipping away at it. So it's milk and it's ale. He's got mail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, milk with the M and then ale at the end. I will have to make some milk ale. Just call it mail now. <laughs> oh my lord, that sounds so disgusting. Gross. I mean, there's creamy <laughs> beer, so I guess you could have a milky ale. I don't know. Yeah, but. All alcohol. Frederick right. is just disappointed that nobody else is laughing at his joke. <laughs> like, yeah, I suppose in a way it does sound kind of odd. The, the, the child is... Yeah, is I, uh, Silas would laugh. Yeah, and, the, uh, the child is giggling, but probably not at you. <laughs> um, uh, I have to go see some people later. Um... At the blacksmithy. They're not my biggest fans. Um, what do you have to think about? I just some stuff I wanted to get them to make. But. Um, Sorry, you cut out there for a second. Um, what. Sorry. Uh, what, where are you going? Um, to the blacksmithy. Okay. Um, iffy, and I was just like, <laughs> uh, they're, they're Nick's grandparents and they're not very fond of me. Um, I was hoping perhaps uh you guys can come with me sure just okay. as uh back up 
that's kind of why I brought Nikki as well as this uh, they don't often get to see him and it might make things easier um, I mean I don't mind helping just let me finish this first oh, <laughs> sorry. Um, no uh, Silas will order uh, uh, I think in a port town, I'm not big on seafood, but he probably orders crab. Okay. Or fish of some sort, anyways. Uh, we'll say the crab is in season. Um, when Sandy comes back to the table, uh, Nico, uh, Nikki uh, uh, kind of holds out the empty mug uh, as if asking for more. And uh, Sandy kind of squeezes his little cheek and takes the mug and refills it with some more milk. Yes, you're going to be very active today after all this sugar. <laughs> um, so yeah, he'll he'll basically just uh, eat and make sure that uh, Nicodemus eats. Um, he says, "I don't often bring him to town. He usually stays with the family, but uh, he does like seeing other people." The child makes all uh, kinds of adoring noises, chomping, mm. chomping down on. What are you? Are you feeding the kid healthy food, or like are we talking <laughs> carrot sticks here, or hunks of of uh, fish? Some crab, some vegetables. Okay. Um, three years old, he can speak, uh, speak but not super stuff. complexly. Yeah, it's not a lot of people to talk to around home. Um. Is he at that stage of his early childhood where he asks questions about everything? Possibly. He's just past the terrible twos. So. <laughs> he knows what... Tell people how old he is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm free! <laughs> um. You're this many? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Daddy, he made a rude gesture. He made rude hands. No, he didn't. Rude hands is like this. <laughs> <laughs> for, the, oh, for, the, for the next couple of hours, yeah. the kid is doing nothing but, you know, waving fingers in the air at everybody he sees. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. His, his, uh, his grandparents will love that. Um. <laughs> I'll just whisper to Silas. Uh, yeah, sorry. I didn't think that would happen. <laughs> oh, a lot of time with children, I see. He's a, he's a, he's a kid. He'll do anything you show him that gets attention, won't you, Nikki? Yes. He smiles and giggles. Why do I keep treating you like a pet? Um, <laughs> you feel the squirm of your pet in your pocket. Yeah. It comes out and gives Nikki a hug. Nikki hugs it back until I get him to stop strangling my 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 snake bird. Mm -hmm. Yes, for those uh, who don't remember, uh, his his pet in his pocket is indeed a snake with wings, small, like about the size of a grass snake. Yep, named Gideon. Um, uh, also, um, they would note, uh, especially since I got the art back. Um, Silas isn't blonde. Uh, Nikki is. Uh, Silas's hair is actually almost a greenish black, uh, like a very, very dark green. Um, but, uh, but yeah, he'll just uh, go through the meal and uh, Nick will make friends of anyone nearby. He can walk around. So. Sandy seems to spend a lot more time at your table and at some points is, is seen kind of dancing uh, with the child who's only a little bit shorter than she is. Remember, she's a halfling. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah, he'd be, a, yeah, maybe six inches shorter than a, a an average halfling. Um, or less. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, you just go for food, and then once everyone's done eating, he'll show them to the Wyndham uh, blacksmithy. Okay. Yeah, I forget to send you that name earlier. I mentioned to, I meant to, but 
I found the name uh, Wyndham. I've made everything else up. So <laughs> Yeah. Not a problem. That's all I had was the name Wyndham. I was making uh, genealogy charts last night for so many more reasons. It's just crazy. Uh, I think I know how half the town lives now. Nice. As you make your way out, um, the uh, blacksmithy is actually on the uh, seaward side of town. Um, there's a, a bit more access there potentially to uh, raw materials coming in off the docks. And there's always bits and pieces that are needed for uh, ships, bits and pieces of metal. Uh, it is a fairly large blacksmithy. Uh, there has been others in town, as you know, Silas, but uh, the Wyndham blacksmithy has has uh, weathered most of those. Known for its quality, known for its uh, its uh, quick turnaround time, uh, but also uh, known for um, uh, kind of almost aggressive sales, if you will. Uh, there's a couple of of, uh, of of juniors, in particular one of the assistants, Yuri, who, as soon as your ship comes into dock, runs out to the ship and starts to uh, inquire about anything they might need and start practically taking orders. Um, from quite a distance away, you can see the, the dark black smoke of the smithy itself. Uh, you can hear the, the tang, tang, tang of, of uh, hammers, uh, multiple hammers, because there's more than one smith, although um, your uh, father-in-law, I guess, would be. Um, yes. Uh, Aloysius, otherwise known as Wish, uh, is the primary one, and he directs all the work under him, but he has several um, uh, apprentices as well. As you get closer, um, you can see that uh, Yuri, uh, not surprisingly, uh, is the first person you meet, uh, runs out. Yuri is a rather slender uh, young man uh, and has a, a, uh, a sort of a roll of paper or sheaf of paper in hand looking as though he's going to take an order but then when he recognizes you Silas he kind of frowns uh, realizing there's not much commission to be made if at any um, okay um, yeah I probably get uh, carrying Nick uh, on my hip uh, uh, is it Yuri is uh, Aloysius in uh, Mr. Marsh, uh, of course. Um, do your friends need to buy something today? I was looking rather hopeful at Annie uh, and Hedrick. Yeah. Maybe. I need to buy something. something. I want to let you know. Um, yes, they may, uh, they may uh, decide to pick something up. The work here is very good. Thank you. Um, we work very hard to make sure that everybody appreciates our work. Master Wyndham is here. Although he's working, I can take the orders if if that's... Um, if you know what you're um, looking for. I sort of, uh, uh, like, bump up uh, uh, Nicodemus uh, in my arms and say, I think uh, I'd rather talk with him... Uh, Directly, please. Uh, all right. You know where the actual Master Forge is. He, he's there right now. And he kind of waves at, at Nikki. He gives one of those little, like, little half waves, and Nikki kind of waves at him enthusiastically. Yeah. Um, um, oh, and uh, Silas is wearing his uh, adventuring coat. Uh, right now, rather than his uh, performing gear. Um, so yeah, Silas will walk back, uh, walk past the uh, the other smithies and whatnot. Also looking to see if uh, Mrs. Wyndham is in. Uh, he's just keeping an eye out for either of them. Um, but he'll head back to the master smithy. Yeah, you're passing through some of the smiths kind of look up. Uh, you don't recognize most of them. Um, some of them seem to be fairly new apprentices. One of the others in the back uh, kind of gives you a glowering look um, and then goes back to his work. Uh, the heat, the temperature rises significantly as you get deeper and deeper into the, the smithy. Uh, Medric, you find the heat comforting. Nice. Um, although the smoke is a little thick. 
Um, but the uh, Smiths are hard at work, and the master smithy um, stands before you. You haven't seen uh, Anza, which is uh, Wishes Life, uh, your mother-in-law. Um, she's not often directly at the forge. Um, they have, um, well, she's also kind of doing some business as well. Mm. She does the smaller crafting for the most part, whereas uh, Wish tends to do the, the bigger pieces um, well made um, for the most part. But you see him uh, kind of pounding away. It looks like he's pounding away and curving some metal. Um, it's not immediately clear what he's working on, but the metal seems to be of thin strips. And he's got multiple pieces kind of laid out in front of him. Uh, each of them he's curving slightly and, and taking some measurements. He glances up and sees you come nearby. Um, and his eyes light up a little bit as he looks towards Nikki. Uh, but then looks suspiciously at uh, the other two and then just gives a, a, a quick, dark look at Silas. I'll just wave. He nods at you. Continues Aloysius. I will actually have my hood down. Okay. Um, he pounds a couple more times, not really acknowledging you, and then um, kind of takes, him, uh, takes the piece out, uh, starts to measure it against the others. There's actually, um, I thought you might want to see, uh, Nicodemus again. I know I, I don't bring him by often. Uh, Silas looks very nervous and, uh, not his normal personable self. Um, Wish kind of takes the, the, the tongs and pulls the piece of metal he's working on, which is still glowing fairly brightly red. Um, you, you can quite imagine that his arms are very highly muscled, and every time he kind of squeezes or does anything with the, the hammer or the tongs, um, you know, the, the muscles kind of ripple and, and even tense a little bit. Um, you're not sure if that's just because of the work he's doing or the situation he's in. He plunges the, the uh, piece of metal into a bucket of water and the steam rises up in front of him as he kind of looks straight over at uh, Silas. Um, Silas will wait a bit. I mean, Aloysius is obviously a bit busy at the moment. It's been too long. The child should be with Anza and myself more often. That was supposed to be the deal, after all. And he kind of puts the metal aside, walks over. I know. And looks up at the uh, the child more on your shoulder. The child kind of giggles and reaches out his hands towards him. And reaches um, up and picks up the child. I'll lean it. Yeah, I'll, I'll lean in a little closer so that uh, he can pick him up. And despite the force that he's demonstrated a moment ago and sort of in some ways, the aggression that's necessary to pound metal into submission. Despite that, he seems very gentle as he picks uh, Nikki off your shoulder, uh, kind of uh, holds him up effortlessly in front of him, uh, and then kind of gives him a little little shake. And Nikki kind of uh, giggles and squeals. Um, Silas will, will basically let him play with Nikki for a while before he speaks up much but uh um he says uh aloysius i uh i need a couple of things and i wanted to come to the best place to get them uh and uh silas is looking down as well he's not looking exactly like, right at uh aloysius i should have known um, that the only reason you'd be here is because you need something Something the family can't provide, I guess. Hmm. Yes, to be honest. I have been working with my friends, Annie and Medrick, and he'll point them out. And uh, I need something 
better uh, to wear while I'm out there. And at that point, he'll take off the uh, the jacket, and uh, Annie and Medrick can see that he's wearing uh, studded leather underneath. Uh, he said, "This is." Well, he he points to a couple of arrow holes, and uh, says, "This isn't bad, but I need something." better if I'm going to uh, going to keep uh, working with them and supporting Nikki and the family he kind of looks over at your armor I feel like I haven't described Wish all that well so I'm going to take a moment now just to describe him besides you know bulging muscles which apparently is something that I see first <laughs> um, he is uh, completely bald and in clean shaven as well, very thick corded muscles along his neck. I'm back to the muscles again. Uh, human uh, average height, but he has a tremendous collection of tattoos. Um, they are, are single color uh, black uh, ink tattoos or black and blue ink tattoos uh, that run uh, essentially down his back along uh, and up over his head as well. I guess what we describe them colloquially today would be tribal tattoos, but they're not really tribal in the sense. Uh, more that they're more abstract patterns meant to kind of give an overall impression rather than individual symbols or, you know, an anchor on the forehead or something. Uh, and they, they kind of give this impression of, of his body always being in motion. And granted, when you've seen him, he was when he was working with the, the anvil. But there's just a sort of impression about them that that uh, kind of complements uh, his his look, his dark eyes, uh, fairly uh, uh, thick brow, um, and uh, has kind of plain features. Um, you can see there's a, a, a couple of scars on his arm, probably burn scars. Actually, Medrick would know they're burn scars because he can practically <laughs> recognize them at 50 feet. Um, probably from the work that he's done here at the forge. Um, he kind of pulls Nikki in and kind of uh, cradles him uh, again kind of effortlessly uh, on one shoulder. Um, Nikki tries to climb him like a small mountain. Yeah, mm -hmm. Probably doesn't even react to that. Uh, can't really move either because he's got him uh, tightly uh, held. Um, looks over at uh, the armor and then looks over at Annie and Medrick. So, you're his friends, are you? That's something new. I, yeah, he's a cool guy. I... Hmm. So you're getting They're yourself good. into trouble? I'm not sure what the awkwardness in the air is about, but. Uh... <laughs> you're getting yourself in trouble then? Something you need something better for than that secondhand no, we... scrap you're wearing? take jobs and go places and sometimes there's bandits that try to pierce our bodies with pointy things. And kind of... Yes, I need something better. He kind of nods his head. I've heard about more bandits in this area. They're not... They're not in check as they should be. It's disappointing. No. I think they're getting organized. Yeah, something about... Don't mess with the diamond. Make an insight check. All of us? Nope, just Medrick. Okay, insight is oh, my things. I was pretty sure it was plus four. I just had to like double check just in case. Actually, Annie should make this as well. I mean, I've been watching him, so. Yeah. Silas is quite literally distracted by everything else and literally has been described as looking and, at his feet. And he's looking at the ground. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Three. Ooh. Ooh. Apparently your hood is very thick and covers over your eyes. I'm not wearing my hood. I thought you had the hood up. No, oh, I was going to go set the head down. Uh, was that your roll, 13, Max? Yeah. Oh, okay. Mediocre, but right. above 10. <laughs> Um, Medrick, there's a little bit of reaction when you say the diamond, but it, it passes quickly. Maybe a familiarity with the name or just 
hearing a name. Um, but he kind of nods. So you're going to do something about the bandits. Is that what you're saying, Silas? Possibly. Hopefully. Well, if they attack us again. They're likely to do that. And he kind of looks towards the child. Depends. Kind Hopefully more, just me. The more you travel, the more odds you have of getting attacked, I suppose. Hmm. Nick Sorry, is... What was that? Nick is... About, <clears throat> about as safe as he can be back at the clan. You think so, do you? I think he'd be much better, much better with uh, Anza and myself. Your, your experienced with bandits, with fighting. I don't go wandering the woods looking for them. We weren't in the woods. We were on a trail. Still, we're safer here. Safer than with the rest of the family, anyway. The family will keep them safe. Hmm. They don't seem to be too good at that. You can see um, Silas's face uh, probably gets somewhat reddened at that point. Is it? I'm sorry about that. Mm -hmm. You know that. Maybe Nikki should stay with me for a while. I'll ask. Ask. You will ask. What do you need? Something better than this maybe chain hmm. light chain i don't have your constitution or strength no no you don't you come from your family after all silas just lets that slide little nicky here Takes after his mother, thankfully. She was strong. Annie does take note of that comment, and she's like... There is uh, a Um... I'll need a shield, too. Should it have something on it? Doesn't need to. I have, oh, I should say, no, I forgot I changed that into money. Never mind. Um, I'll pay up front, of course. I wouldn't expect anything else. I wouldn't trust anything else. Silas starts, I uh, says, you can, as, uh, he starts to say, you can trust me, and then he stops. And just leaves it. I can make this. But I want you to do something for me. Yes? I don't like Nikki being with the rest of your family for that long. I think he needs better guidance. I want Anza and I to have more time with Nikki. I... He doesn't say it very loud, but he says, I think you may be right. That's the I will see what I can do. While. I'll see what I can do. 
kind of looks over at the, the child. Kind of puts his hand underneath his chin. Are Nikki's the, uh, coughing off, uh, off the dark smoke. <laughs> I get the black lung, daddy! <laughs> <laughs> you are a beautiful thing, aren't you, kid? You have my... He yes, kind he of is. pauses a moment. You have my Molly's cheekbones. With that sullen face. I have work for you, too. Honest work that isn't going to get me killed, I, I would imagine. Yes. Kind of nods over at what he's working on. I've got to put this together for the lighthouse. That's a replacement to hold their globe. I need someone to deliver it. It's heavy. It's cumbersome. And he kind of looks, he looks between the three of you, kind of dismissive at Silas, Kind of looks quickly. Silas is getting a little buffer. He's <laughs> average now. <laughs> looks looks quickly and kind of passes over Annie. Then looks towards Medrick and kind of n uh, nods. He can probably carry it. How heavy is it? It'll be a few hundred pounds. Which is fully assumption. Yeah, should. should be all right. And uh, just no question to the DM. How far away is the lighthouse again? The lighthouse is down by the, the sort of southern shore. So it would be... Probably a few hours travel. Okay. Um, oh, we could manage. If we had a cart, that would be better. But... I have a, a horse. Uh, may be strong enough to carry it. Perfect. You better make sure that all three of you go, though, because if there are bandits out there in the woods or on the trails, I hate for anything to go wrong. And that is fair. No, we hope we don't see them again either. But at least if it's heavy, it's going to be harder to steal, right? We'll make sure that it gets there. It'll be done in a couple of days. I should have your um, your chain. I think I could put together a shield. I should be done by then. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, actually, I can wait till later. Um, I'll, I'll leave you to your work then. Maybe you could leave Nikki here for a little while. I could till later today when I have to go back. It'll do for now. But talk to them. I will. Uh, and uh, I'll say uh, goodbye to Nikki. Grab his hands, play with them a little bit. He looks a little uh, bit confused, but then kind of shrugs, which is yeah, strange like, three-year-old. But... I stay with, uh, with, with uh, Grandpa Wish. I look up and say he's not quite to Aloysius yet. Um, I'll be back for you later. We'll have dinner. I'll make sure he's fed. And he kind of turns to the other two. Look after him. And Nod. watch your back. Was that a threat? Like, I mean, I'm not saying this out loud, but I'm trying to figure out. It's like, is it a threat or like a blessing to be safe? You know, it's more like a warning. Okay. And there's a little yeah. slight glance towards Silas when he says it. Silas chooses not to notice. <laughs> <laughs> um, as we're leaving, I will stop and I'll I'll turn to him because I don't think Silas will will actually have the backbone to, te uh, to tell him. And I'm going to turn to the blacksmith and say, mm -hmm. I wouldn't suggest talking about that around the boy. It's probably not the best thing for him. And I'll turn around and leave. 
And as you're walking away, the boy needs to know. And I'll, I'll, I'll continue. Okay. Uh, Silas will pay the 60 gold on the way out. All right. Yuri will actually uh, uh, settle up the, the debt. Yeah, um, so I figured it would happen. And he, he gives you a receipt for the uh, chain shirt and for the shield. Uh, with an approximate day of, you know, a couple of days from now, it'll be done. Thank you. Nice doing business with you. He tries to put on a happy smile, and especially for, you, you get for, for Medrick and, and uh, Annie, he's, he's like trying to be the, the, the smooth salesman. Everybody probably heard the exchange that just happened, and you're pretty sure that he did as well. But he's like, they could be future customers, really want to be nice to them. <clears throat> and who knows? We might be. Have what was that? Annie already has a <laughs> <laughs> What was the blacksmith's, uh, the blacksmith's name again? Aloysius uh, Wyndham. Yeah, or okay. Wish. You, you, you called him Wish? Yeah. Everybody seems to call him Wish. Except for cool, Yuri, cool. you called him Master Wyndham. Uh, and Silas. Silas. Chainmail from Wish. I hope it's going to be decent quality. <laughs> <laughs> you wish. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, after we're out of uh, earshot of there, I say, uh, thank you. It's it's not easy to talk to them sometimes. Yeah, the awkwardness, I could, like, smell that in the air almost. Like, why was he implying that your family is a bunch of sketch bags? Uh... My family doesn't come to town much. They stick to themselves. Uh, they came from another island. Is the they... town doesn't trust them. They're outsiders. Oh, okay. And... No, that doesn't uh, mean your family isn't safe. Like, what's he implying about? Molly was my wife. Oh. She died while the boats were at sea one day, about a year ago. Sorry about that. No, that's... That must have been hard. Yes, she had come to live with us. She took after her father somewhat. Uh, I'm not one for the hard work of working on a fishing boat. She took to it quite well, but one day she was gone. Now, Nick, you can look back at the, the direction of the blacksmithy and says, Nikki's all that I've got left of her now, and all that they have left of her as well. So it's not easy talking with them sometimes. But thank you for coming. The question does go for you as well, by the way. Sorry, I missed the first half of that. That, that. that suggestion does go to you as well, by the way. It's probably not the best for, for your son to see the only connection to his mother and his father fighting over him. Yes. And that I, I figured you wouldn't have the the strength to tell him, so I did. I think you are perhaps right. I was hoping that Nikki might put him in a better mood. But there's a yeah. difference in between knowing something and actually arguing about it yeah <sighs> i'm hoping things will get better with time but they will anyways i uh i should probably get back to work 
Um, thank you again. Uh, and uh, yeah, Silas will, I mean, Silas will basically walk with them back to their place and pick up his work clothes. Okay. Uh, Make a performance check. Twenty-one. I am twenty-one. Um, I am not twenty-one. <laughs> you make a uh, a killing that week. A ship comes yeah. in, and they have not heard any of your songs, and they're also fairly good tippers. Um, so you make an additional twenty-five gold just from that. Nice. Yeah. Uh, as well as your normal expenses are covered. Uh, and, and your uh, meals are covered and your reputation has gone up. Um, there we go. That's how I take that in. No, that's you, not the right amount. You find yourself uh, with a few offers to play at different pubs. Uh, I don't know if you're playing at the Three Bells or if you're playing at different places, but... He'd probably be... He'd probably have a few different spots around town that he would just uh, rotate between. But Sandy uh, but, wants to uh, try to uh, to entice you to stay more often at the Three Bells, because when the customers are happy, they also drink more, and she mm -hmm. drinks more. Yeah, I mean he's he's fine with working there a bunch too. So, but uh, yeah, I mean when shit when when we see ships that aren't from the town uh, come back in, that's when he'll go out on the docks and work there. So okay. You all continue to kind of meander through the next couple of days. Yeah. Um, Medrick, you're making kind of probably daily pilgrimages to the temple, learning a little bit more here and there, um, still finding some rather um, burning lessons from time to time. And you're becoming very familiar with the different streets around this town and starting to to really have a sense of where this place is and how it's laid out. Um, it's, it's an old town, and you can kind of get the sense, almost like peeling back the layers uh, of an onion, of how this town formed around these few buildings, and these other few buildings probably came a little bit later, and there's some buildings which are just this, this massive block of buildings. Um, where there's not even any alleys in those, in those buildings. They're all built very cheek by jowl. And kind of getting uh, a general sense of the of the patterns of movement and the travel and, and kind of understanding some of the, 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 the movers and shakers. There are more businesses here than you might have expected, but clearly a lot of them do business when the sailors come to town, when the traders come to town, and then their business shift to something entirely different to support the town rather than those industries. So you can only sell so many bits of fancy clothing or so many different bits of jewelry and then when it comes to the, essentially the tourists leaving town, uh, you have to switch to more practical matters. Which Fair is, enough. Uh, you, I, I will say Annie probably does have a little notebook that she keeps note of these types of things. Okay. I like that idea. I like the, I like the idea of the sort of the, the Indiana Jones uh, notebook going on here. <laughs> um, um, she will also, I, I shot a message in, in the group because I'm actually writing the, the response letter. Uh, she will look for a trinket for her sister. Okay. Cool. Cool. What sort of trinket is she looking for? What nature of trinket? Um, something that her sister would never really get from anyone else. Like something from here. Okay. If you want to think on that and suggest something a bit later and, and kind of a price range, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that that happens. It would probably just be like literally a trinket. Okay. Like nothing, n nothing expensive, just something that she sees in the market or something. So probably one of the things that comes to mind is a, a really nice fishing lure. Um, yeah. You know, one that is actually hand carved and had made and probably was actually used, but is no longer being used for whatever reason. Yeah. Something like that, that like, it 100% she would never get this otherwise. Okay. All right. It's got a, 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 a you know old symbols carved in the back of it for good luck. 
And as the week goes on, the patterns start to establish themselves, as I said, of the, the, the ships coming in, the, the tides, the incredibly massive tides. We're talking 60 to 80 foot tides, uh, which make a dramatic difference in how the bay is actually uh, laid out um, and how many ships can come very close. Most of the docks are actually floating docks, so they'll rise and fall with the tides. Some of the docks close in are actually two-tier docks, where the lower docks are actually covered by water by the time the, the, the tide comes in and only the upper docks are actually accessible. And you all settle in. Uh, after a couple of days, uh, or probably after a day, um, Anza comes to you, Silas, uh, with Nico, uh, and looking a, a little apologetic, uh, but says that you... Nico was asking for you, so I thought it was time to make sure that he's back with his father. Thank you, Anza. It's, and she looks kind of tense, it, it's, uh, it's not easy for him. It's not easy for me either. It's not easy for most of us. But, but thank you. Which does mean well. I know. Everybody means well. They just see things differently. Molly saw things differently. She saw something in you. I'd like to think that she has good taste. Had good taste. And now you be a good boy, Nico. Nikki. I call him Nico for no reason. Nikki. And uh, Nikki kind of smiles. Uh, <laughs> that mischievous three-year-old grin, you know, the one that is sort of like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be mm -hmm. good. Of sure. course. <laughs> I've just crayoned the entire wall. <laughs> <laughs> I find it. The wall is nice now. It's colorful. But she kind of pats, pats him on the head and, and leaves him with you. Um, and presumably you're taking him back to be yeah. Taken care of. Yeah. Yeah. He would. He would head back home to, back to his house to, to sleep. And you all take a night's rest. Mm -hmm. In your respective places. Uh, Annie, and Medrick, I think both of you are actually staying at the Three Bells, right? Or did you yeah. want to find a place in your own? Yeah. And Silas, you're staying at your home. Um. Unless is there like room to sleep at the temple, or I don't know if I'd be moving in. You already, can. But... You can. There is space for acolytes at the temple. Um, okay. And despite the fact that it's kind of a shell of a building, um, it's always warm inside, no matter what. It, you'll you'll constantly be around Flame Judy Dench, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's got to be so a. We're probably gonna turn that stay into at the three bells for a while, and when it becomes winter, then I'll I might move into the temple. Okay. The, we'll there, is, there is no one else at the temple but the Flame Keeper. Whereas at the Three Bells, you'll actually run into other people. So, uh, and occasionally some of the other the other uh, soldiers as well, as they are are still in town. Some of them have picked up work doing delivery. Some of them are working on the caravans. Uh, some of them are trying their hand at fishing, and it's you hear a lot of complaints about how hard fishing is. Uh, they'd rather just go out and st stick a knife in somebody, but they have to fish instead. <laughs> and one of them jokes that he stuck a knife in a fish and it worked. So. Uh, <laughs> I think Annie might at some point try to fish. Okay. Because that feels like something that she would she, like. She would want to try. It'd be fishing off the dock, definitely. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and even when the tide is out, um, people go out in waders for a lot of the fish, or they'll collect uh, shellfish, or they'll collect uh, um, mollusks and things too. So. Um. Uh, did uh, did Medrick want the uh, summoning stone? Yeah, might as well. Okay. Then uh, before uh, he leaves to take uh, Nikki back that night, uh, Annie and Medrick will see that uh, Silas takes the uh, the bracers out and puts them on uh, Nikki. <laughs> Good idea. Um, Nikki's kind of playing with them, and, and as you watch, they do seem to, to fit snugly. I was like, there we go. 
and he kind of uh, walks around. They're a little heavy for a three-year-old body, so he kind of walks around with his arms a little bit uh, exaggeratedly extended and uh, occasionally hits things with them and is pleased to hear mm -hmm. the sort of ringing sound they make when they hit people, or hit things, rather. You're hoping it doesn't hit people with them? Yeah. Then he, he goes over by a table leg and just starts going, ting, 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 Kinda. ting, ting. ting. <laughs> Makes a sound, and he gets attention. The, the noisy threes. <laughs> was the, terrible the, twos. Yeah. the noisy threes. That's what it is. Yeah. Um, the thrilling uh, threes. But yeah, then he'd take them home. Just they, they would see that before he had to. Okay. Um, he looks kind of weirdly, you know, like a tiny miniature shrunken uh, soldier <laughs> in some mm -hmm. ways with those. Although they are beautiful. They are as much uh, artwork as they are uh, 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 safety. As you all settle in for the evening, uh, Medric probably filled a bit with uh, camaraderie. You know, these are some of the soldiers you'd worked with. You've been a soldier. There's an understanding there. Even if at first they're a little bit wary because of the the uh, the Ignean thing, um, you speak their language. Yeah. They know and I probably healed like, some of them in the battlefield, maybe. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. They've seen you fight in battle. They've seen you help in battle. They, they, they kind of come to trust you. Even those that don't know you right away see the familiarity. So there's a there's a weird sense of comfort that grows from from kind of that that familiarity but there's also a little bit of 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 uh, frustration and sadness because they're having a hard time adjusting and you can kind of sense that um, some of them have even talked about how there are there are some groups looking to hire some strong people and they don't ask many questions and they get the job done and you kind of get the feeling that they're talking about maybe hiring on with some of the less reputable groups in the area uh, you don't see the the few that you had identified before however um, do i hear diamond mentioned anywhere in any conversations um make an investigation not investigation well let's make this um a perception check let's make it a simple perception check perception That's not too bad. Yeah, a couple of Call times some people mentioned that they've heard of someone called the Diamond. Um, it says he pays well. Okay. For, for no questions asked. Uh, most of them don't seem to be entirely contemplating it, but they're, they're curious. Um, and the one who's mentioning it is not one you served with before. In fact, you're not really familiar with them at all. Okay. But I do recognize, like, I can make out the face who mentioned the diamond. Like, if I see him later, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, you'd recognize him. So you settle in for the evening. A thick fog has kind of come in that later evening. Not an uncommon feature you've noticed of this particular place, but it, it adds a little chilliness to the air and a little bit of extra um, shrouding of the town. And you all fall asleep. And then find yourself floating like in water. It's all dark around you. You can feel the, the tender tendrils of mist kind of washing over your exposed skin, your face. But there's no water around you. You don't feel that heaviness of the water. And after a moment... It feels like not fire. <laughs> <laughs> after a moment, you feel your feet kind of touch down on solid ground. Surrounded by shadow and off a few feet in each direction, you see in, uh, two other figures, kind of shadowy outlines that resolve themselves somewhat into your two other companions. Each of you are dressed as you would have been for 
the travels to the Winthrop farm. Familiar clothing, but all of it seems slightly out of focus, slightly um, indistinct. And as you kind of pay attention to these little details and your eyes naturally scan over, you can see the faces clearly, but everything else seems to be somewhat shadowed. And you see each other. Do we have our weapons? You look down and your weapons are there. Hmm. Hmm. Where are we? I'll just like reach out and whoever is the closest to me, I'll poke one of them on the shoulder. Like, are they real? Huh. Yeah, you focus, you poke Silas and you feel this heavy poke from Medric. It seems substantial enough, although it was a little weird to reach out because it, it felt like you weren't quite sure exactly how far to reach out. That indistinctiveness was there too. You can feel solid is, ground beneath you. Is this Catherine's doing? Possibly. I went to sleep and now we're here. Annie, you cut out a little bit. What was that? That would be my guess. Sorry, it wasn't that I cut out. It was that I had to put, like, one of those tiny silent burps. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a biological um, thing. Y'all. So you said we saw... So were there two other figures in addition to us? No. Or were no, you, you we saw, the two other You each saw the other two. But as you come closer together, you, you can now make out each other. There's no... Well, as you get closer, Medric... It may just be a trick of the indistinctiveness, but it almost appears as though Medric glows slightly. Cool. Annie's face in the cloak seems to be shadowed a bit more. And Silas almost seems to blend in a little bit more with the darkness. His his uh, greenish black hair seeming to deflect vision. And his skin seems a little bit darker as well. But not a solid single color, more mottled patches. Almost as though the hair itself is uh, staining his skin where it is touched. You two look a little strange. Hmm. So do you. This whole place is strange. The sound seems, yeah. seems to swallow up as though it's not echoed at all, and the fog itself swirls around you. Off in the distance now, like a pale blue sun almost, seems to arise out of the horizon and grows brighter and larger and seems to be moving closer. Stare uh, at them. Uh. After a moment or so, it, it seems to take on a bit more distinctiveness. And you recognize the feline and female form of the Gynosphinx, Catherine, running towards you. And in that weird, in that weird sense of, of, of time shifting, it's as though she's running to you for a long time, but then suddenly there, as if the intervening distance was not linear. And she stands now beside you, tall, her head nearly at uh, eight feet on, on top of this, this feline body. I have found you. You were in the darkness. This place is not a normal dream. Not as I had wished it. Is this normally how you're going to contact us? This is or is this I, different? This is all I think I can do for now. I am limited by the space where I live, where I exist. But this... This may be enough. There is something shifting here, and I need you to see. I need your help. Please, come with me. 
And she turns without waiting for you and starts to walk off. Sure. Hello. Yep. Um, it's clear now that she is the one that is the glow. She is the pale blue glow with a little bit of green uh, here and there uh, coming from her. The glow seems to illuminate the fog around you, but does not penetrate it. Again, however, Medric seems to glow a uh, somewhat yellowish orange glow, distinctive from her blue. And as you move, you feel, you get the sense of kind of climbing higher and higher until you can make out just a little bit of horizon difference. It's kind of like you are seeing shadow on shadow and you can only make out a little bit of difference by the shifting of the horizon before you. And she points as you reach the crest and you look down upon a large mass of shifting uh, black air. That is Aelthvader, as I see it. A shadow looms heavy over the town. I do not know its source yet, but I am trying to find it. Has it gotten bigger recently? Yes, it grows all the time. I fear that a rift is forming. The stress to the interplanar spaces has grown too strong from the changes. We had feared this, but it was not avoidable. What does that mean for the existence of the town? And she kind of turns back to you. It means they are at risk. All of them. But this can be fought. I need to find the nexus of discovery. What's but that? It is the place where time meets. And all things spread out from there. If I can locate this, I can have glimpses of the future. And we can avoid it. But I will need your help. For now, I simply seek some light in this darkness. There is a place that I will take you to. This is not the world as you know it. This is between the worlds as you know them and the worlds as I know them. It is a part of a rift and part of a door and part of a wall. I will take you there. And she looks okay. at each of you for confirmation, a nod or a shake of the head or... Yeah, I would say, uh, sure, if it'll keep things safe. And uh, I'm, I'll try to observe the shadows a little bit longer. You say there's a rift. By looking at it, can you pinpoint or at least get a general direction of where it originates? It is too large Shadow. and too shadowy to say it originates in one place. Yeah. It holds over the town. It is interested in the town. Its life, its history, its future, its possibility. What's so special about this town? I don't know yet. But I suspect it is the proximity to the former temple. But it may be something else. Take hold of my fur and travel with me. Okay. I'll do that. Sure. So Some are we just tool. like grabbing onto her fur or are we like going on top of her? <laughs> How do you interpret that? I'm just going to hang on to her tail because I don't know what she'll do if I try to climb on top. We just. I'm like, just going to grab onto you or do we jump onto you like you were a horse? I apologize if that was offensive, by the way. <laughs> she looks down at you with a sort of amused smirk. This is a dream. You may interpret it as you wish. And 
there's a wink that accompanies that? Well, if it's a dream, <laughs> my physics can be broken, so I'll just jump and try to like fly, kind of like moon jump, like like jumping as if you were on the moon, and land on her back. Full Titanic moment. Make a wisdom <laughs> saving throw. Wisdom. Oh, oh shit! Well, actually, wisdom isn't too bad. And I get to add my proficiency bonus. Oof. <laughs> okay. So my proficiency you, bonus is as high as my roll. You all see Medric kind of hunker down for a moment and then leap up into the air, kind of arms wide, legs wide, tr looking like he's going to do a splashdown. He does go up higher than you would have expected from a standing jump, and Medric, you feel that rise somewhat. And as you start to descend towards um, Catherine, you feel yourself kind of adjusted. And instead of a, a, a belly splash, you find yourself landing as if landing on a horse. Uh, and you, you land kind of carefully and even slowly, just sort of gradually land. Um, and you see the amusement on Catherine's face as she kind of says to you, Yours is not the only will here, but I find your attempt interesting. <laughs> and then she tenses. You can feel as each of you are kind of holding on her, her muscles tense. Are and you guys coming on? She, well, Silas has the tail. Annie has a handful of uh, shoulder, I think, at this point. Yep. Silas uh, might get kicked if he's behind her. <laughs> as you feel her kind of tense and leap upward, not entirely unlike what Medric did, but leaving the ground with no, no trajectory, just up into the air. And then as though the fog was forming a ring instead of a, a, instead of a sphere, as though all of space and time seems to warp in front of you, uh, you feel this shift. And unlike what you would have expected from a normal jump, it does not slow down and reach an apogee, but instead seems to speed up further and further, as though falling downward through a deep hole. And then, whoosh, the, uh, the, the circle of, of fog passes, and whoosh, the circle of another fog, and whoosh, the circle of, of shadow and darkness, until she lands, suddenly, on what seems like solid earth. We are here. I can sense, when she looks around nervously, I can sense something big. I will hold it, but I need you to light the beacons. They will appear to you as crystals, but they are mind structures. Everything here is not what it seems. Can you do this for me? Yeah. Uh, question. You said mind structures or mine? Mind with a D. Okay. Then, good luck. And she turns, takes a couple of steps, begins to jump, and then kind of leaps into the air straight at what you can now see as an amassing uh, amorphous darkness and kind of calls back over her shoulder. They will be guarded. And kind of vanishes into the shadow. And now, I will put you guys on the proper map and switch over to the map page. So if you're on roll 20, I need to click on the map myself. I moved you, but not myself. How weird is that? Okay. As you find yourself surrounded by what looks like stone, it has a strange texture to it. There are ridges around the area you are. And if you go to the ridge and just kind of look a little bit over, you see nothing but a swirling blue mass, almost as though uh, reality itself sort of ceases to exist. It somewhat resembles water, but at the same time seems insubstantial, more like fog, but has that bluish tint. 
there's a small glow from in front of you, as you can see, probably see. Actually, you might be not able to see, depending on how the map is set up. I haven't. I only see my token. You only see your token. I yes, you. I see my token in blackness. Okay, I, I guess we're still like it. traveling if, if everything's black. Sure, that's what it is. It's totally just that. Um, it's totally all in our mind. I just want to make sure I have the dynamic lighting. I have them turned on for vision. Oh, I know what it is. Uh, what I will do is you will all emit a bit of light. Also, can we just take a minute to like appreciate the art that we got done yes actually someone wants to talk about that a moment um i can't find the name of the person off the top of my head but i think it's george something uh, it's well i'm not sure exactly how it's pronounced but i believe it's uh, george silva uh and uh, my apologies uh, sir if i'm mispronouncing the name i meant to ask about that but uh forgot to um I apologize yeah. for being the slacker and getting my character description in. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, Annie and uh, Silas uh, both have new art. Uh, Official we, art, man. Yep, we posted uh, the uh, the pictures and the the link to his a couple of times. I posted it in the Envicon one as well. Um, He's a guy working in Chile uh, who cannot do his uh, normal job right now due to the lockdown. So he was looking to take commissions and he works very fast. Uh, the pictures, we, the, the one I had, which had everything, including background and everything else, uh, was $20 uh, US, which is really, really affordable. Yeah, I don't mind um, with no background, and it was 15, so. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so he's uh, very easy to work with. Uh, very quick. As, yeah. Like, literally, I think for both of us, it was after we sent him the email, he had the sketch the next day, and then it was done the day after. Yep. Uh, so as, we'll have one for Medrick as well. Uh, I've got everything together to send him now, so we should have that by next week. <laughs> yep. Uh, very yeah, and it, it was, yeah, it was really nice art too. I mean, he said he called it a simple background, but the the one for the full picture of mine is really nice. Yep, and like he was really invested in at least my character story. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, when I get back, he even has he his said, own idea. I love like, that idea. He, <laughs> after I got mine, he's like head cannon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Little so, story yeah. stuff that I actually really appreciate, and will it will, will be implying. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, if, if anyone out there needs uh, pictures done for their characters, uh, then uh, uh, we should have uh, the contact information down below in the uh, descriptions. Uh, whenever this goes onto YouTube, um, and uh, yeah, just give them a shout. Also, like, there are so many little details that, like, he put even just in the drawing itself that, yeah. like, it, it looks simple when you look at it, but, like, I noticed when I was looking at it closer that there are, like, so many little details that he took yeah. that, like, you can't see unless you zoom into the picture, and, like, I really appreciated that. Yeah. I, uh, I, I've got to hold myself back from spending all of my money because I want to have all of my character, all of my, all of my NPCs illustrated at some point here. But mm -hmm. uh, given that I had several hundred in my previous game or previous incarnation, may not all of them, but uh, uh, definitely cool work. And uh, I look forward to seeing more of it. All right. Uh, can you see the map any better now? I can't really test it. Oh, yeah, we can see the entire map. Okay. Yeah, I, I basically turned off the, uh, the uh, or put global illumination on. So... Uh, I guess try to act surprised, uh, but uh, wait—is it Global Illumination Limited or Unlimited? I think it was. That was from uh, the uh, Stuff They Don't Want You to Know podcast. They had a uh, a fake, uh, uh, oh, not patron, uh, fake advertiser. That was Global Illumination Unlimited. Uh, 
Unfortunately, if I turn that off, I lose everything. So eh, we'll see how this works out. Yeah, lighting <laughs> seems to be a little iffy sometimes on this. I like yeah. Roll20 for a lot of things. I do not like it yet for uh, for having figured out all of the <laughs> all of those mm -hmm. parts. But yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and I looked at the possibility of spending extra money so I could make custom character sheets because I have so many modifiers and Pathfinder that uh, the regular sheets don't work perfectly. I looked at one sample sheet. It has 7,000 lines of HTML code. Whew. Like, that is way beyond me. It, yeah, it, it, it probably looks more complicated than it is. 7,000 is not that much, but I'm a coder, so it's a different point of view. Yeah, not, well, yeah that's the thing. For coders, that's probably great. But for yeah. me, it's like, oh, I don't know if I could actually do that. Well, we'll see. I've made we'll basic see. websites with HTML, but that's the extent of my knowledge. Yup. I want to include uh, makes it link to a place. Yeah. This displays a picture. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, as you stand there and the light starts to to or your eyes start to adjust to the dim light, which is really being projected mostly from that miasma of blue, uh, this sort of blue sea-like quality in which these strange rocky islands seem to float. Uh, there is also a pinpoint of of uh, sort of a pale yellow light uh, coming from a, a, a crystal not too far away from you. However, you see gathered around the crystal would appear to be uh, large um, spider-like creatures. I say spider-like only in, in terms of um, the number of limbs seems to change as they shift and move as though their forms aren't solid. Um, they seem to uh, have uh, additional thoraxes if they were spiders. They have uh, large uh, mandibles. And of course the fact that they're four feet wide. That also would make it very different from a spider. Uh, they do not, you see one chamber ahead of you, they do not seem to have noticed you, but they do seem to be clawing and pecking away at that uh, crystal in the center, and you can see it seem to uh, seem to flicker as though they are trying to uh, take it out. So, you have whatever approach you want um, to this, but I will say two things. Uh, one, as far as your, your character's options go, they have all their normal options. Uh, it also feels as though your bodies have solidified somewhat, almost because this place is more solid, you have become yourselves somewhat more. So, you see each other distinctly, you have your normal your normal uh, weaponry available to you. To light these beacons, you will need to spend an action with the beacon. You will need to consider... Uh, let me see if I've got that right here. Uh, consider a skill use. There are only three skills which I feel are appropriate to this. You can try any skill you like. Uh, but if it doesn't seem to be the appropriate one, a successful uh, skill roll won't be a lighting of the beacon. It will require two successful skill rolls uh, of uh, only beating DC 12, so not that high, uh, to light it. However, as you've already seen, these creatures are trying to put these out. So, um... Each of the crystals has a little hover bar over it. I think you can see that. Uh, nope. Okay. Nope. I will see if I can make that visible. Uh, oh, uh, which one is this? Okay. Am I still glowing, by the way? Okay, now I see it. Uh, you are still glowing somewhat. Um, so yeah, there will be a bar. I'll try to make sure that I get one over each of these. Um, still getting used to setting things up on Bowl 20. Will I ever be used to it? No, probably not. Um, also, I figured out what the issue with the tracker was, but also it's been two weeks, so I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest thing is when you roll your initiative before you do, select your character. Yeah. Um, because that will... That will put it into the into the uh, tracker. I now know the shortcuts uh, to add my own creatures to the tracker, uh, but yeah. I'm I'm, ran, I'm manually rolling initiative for them now. Uh, I think 
Yes. Okay. And the other thing is, is that you, um, I, th I think it was going into the options and making sure you have it so that it's in the right order that you want, like ascending or descending. Right. Numerically descending. Okay. I think it was something like that. Well, we shall see as I try to add those guys. And I need to manually roll. Uh, the debate is whether I want to roll and roll 20 or just roll dice for mine because I don't have character sheets for these guys. Okay. Uh, okay. I just rolled my ankle trying to sit down. <laughs> We are we're still setting up. Do I have time to like grab another coffee? Uh, sure, sure, sure. It's a Keurig, so it goes really fast. <laughs> BRB. Brody was just leaving for work, so. Yeah, it's playing at an I'm unusual time. Makes everything unusual. Um, these maps were created, by the way, in uh, Dungeon Draft. Um, I recently did pick up the humble bundle for cartoon or cartoon uh, campaign cartographer three plus. So uh, I hope I'll be able to make better maps out of out of all this stuff. Uh, it is a challenge, but uh, I literally just finished as they as they both left. And I want to echo my uh, my appreciation too for the artwork. I think that, that that artist is stupendous. Good art, very quick, yep. reasonable prices. <coughs> Excuse me. Yep. Uh, I guess I can put in a social media plug. Um, the <coughs> stream this uh, was originally at uh, 4 o'clock on Sundays, uh, Atlantic time. Uh, we've shifted now to uh, Sunday mornings, starting at... Uh, I guess we did actually approximately start on time at 10.30. We may shift that to 11 a.m. Uh, also, you can find episodes previous to this on YouTube. I believe everything is up now. I finally got myself caught, caught up. Uh, YouTube.com slash ENCAF1. That's ENCAF1. And you look for the Legend of the Drowned Isles. Uh, in this particular case, it is the Great Confusion. Uh, so videos generally go up the following week, so you can find out. This this campaign has only just started. We've only had, a, I think, four sessions, including session zero at this point. Um, so it's, it's manageable and easily, easily caught up. Uh, you can also join us on Facebook. We have a uh, page called Legends of the Drowned Dials. That's convenient. It's also a place for you to join. There's a group called Watchers of the Drowned Dials if you'd like to chat about things. Uh, we aren't really that chatty at the moment, but we'll try to get a little chattier, I guess, as time goes on. Um, I want to mention, too, uh, Annie has both the letter that was sent by H as well as the ring should be visible to you as handouts in yes. 20 if you need to refer to them. Cool. Uh, yes, I did. Yesterday, I made myself a coffee and promptly forgot about it. So mom put it in the fridge for me, and so now I have, like, iced coffee. And it took zero minutes does, to make. Does that work? I, you know, I, I've, I've had leftover coffee that I've put in the fridge. And I use it for cooking, but I don't use it for drinking. I'll use any coffee for drinking. Like three-day-old coffee from a Tim's box? Gimme. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I may be called the encaffeinated one, but even I have some standards. <laughs> All righty, then. So. Oh, hi, Kenny. You haven't seen me all morning. <laughs> <laughs> I just hear. We just need MJ to show up, and we'll have the trifecta of cats. Yeah, yeah. it's probably laying in my room somewhere. <laughs> okay, uh, I feel like the cats should get their own uh, their own illustrations, maybe two. Maybe we could do a three <laughs> for like a small D and D manies like with cats. Yeah, was, I never yep. got them. Yep, there were I the holes. I bought the Kickstarter. I should probably message them. Nice. <laughs> Oh, um, uh, oh, but like, I have to say this now, otherwise I'll forget. Um, you, you know when there was like the Capnado in the uh, regular 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Before yeah. there should totally be like a Far Haven adventure for cats at some point. I I'm just saying that, like throwing that out I, there. I have two different games which are specifically cat based. I have uh, Call of Cthulhu. Nice. And oh, what was the other one? There's there's another one which is all cats facing off against apocalyptic beings or something. Like that. I see. Uh, I, I maybe I'll draw those out as a special one shot. I don't know how those work yet though. <laughs> Can I get each of you to roll your initiative? Remember to select your character, and then when you press initiative on your character sheet, it should show up. We've got Silas. Um, the decimal afterwards is just to break ties. That's your uh, should be your dexterity. And I need one from Medric. Can I like minimize the turn order? It's always in the way, no matter where I put it. You can move it. Um, I don't know. How, you can change it. Uh, did it move? Can you move it, or can only I move it? Maybe oh, I can. Move it. Yeah, just I, I just put it in the top right corner so that it's yeah. like over yeah. top rolls. And you can shrink it a little bit, but not a lot. You can shrink it so that you can only see like one and a half. I can shrink it down to see only one. So you, you, you have the controls at the bottom, though. I have power. Yeah. All right, so I still need to hear from Medric, it looks like. Yeah. So you said I select my character, and then I do what? And yep. then click initiative on your character sheet. I just opened a thing, now I can't close it. <laughs> no, I just, I just opened a, a, another thing. Oh, character sheet, yes. <laughs> I was selecting myself, like, on the main window. Oh, yeah. yeah. No. So you have to have your, like, token selected so that you see, like, the, like, option things and everything if you double click on your character icon it should bring up your character sheet as well oh okay i'm in the character sheet now it's just actually if you double click it it goes edit token oh never mind <laughs> so i'm clicking initiative but it's not doing anything it might take a moment yeah you have to click the word yeah the word should oh, go okay. red and then you click gotcha. it. there we go all right now we want to sort this descending. And last time I tried this. Uh, like someday I might actually clean this desk off so I'll have enough space for a mouse. So like not every <laughs> click is going to take like 20 seconds. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. Looks like it sorted it fine. Uh, Annie, you're Hello. On. I always go first. It's true. <laughs> almost, <laughs> almost managed to go first this time. but. Yo. Um, so the goal is to get so these activated. Catherine asked, asked you to activate the beacons, but she did say they would be guarded, and you can see these spider-like creatures surrounding them. Or cool. Or one of them, anyway. Uh, I um, should say that the, the path of stone is essentially a hovering path, which uh, goes from the top of the little, um, little uh, rock wall around each of these little islands. So it is a traversable area. You don't really think you want to figure out or find out what happens if you fall into the blue miasma. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, and the edges of the map where it's beyond the blue miasma seems to be uh, there as well. So this weird floating collection of small islands. Okay, so I am... Oh, geez, it helps if I actually select my token. Uh, so one, two, uh, I'm, I'm going to step on it and see what the reaction is to that. Seems solid. Cool. Awesome. One, two, three, four, five, uh, six. Um, and I am just going to go straight to trying to activate it. Okay. How do you want to try to activate it? Uh, you said it is a skill. Right. Not every skill will work. Hmm. What does this look like? So it appears to be a, a, a cluster of crystals glowing slightly. The two creatures on each side seem to be looking to try to pull it apart, and it flickers every time they remove a small chunk. Hmm. 
I would like to try. I would like to try sleight of hand to try to hold it together and to like try to like flip everything back into place. Okay. Go ahead and roll. Sorry, I've got another screen I'm open here. Okay. As you push your hands towards the crystals and they start to encounter the the glowing energy around them, your hands seem to almost move through the crystals. So they don't seem to have a physical nature as you expected, but you do see the uh, patterns of light within them seem to shift and change. It would appear that this kind of physical manipulation does not help you, but you've learned a little bit about something else you might try. Cool. I just need to run and get my level four character sheet because I forgot it. it's got new it's got new spells and such. <laughs> so I'll be right back. Right. Fair okay. enough. In the moment, uh, so you've moved and you've done an action. You have your bonus action. Yes, I forgot what this character can do as a bonus. Um, um, one note on roll twenty: something we've discovered that we should have known before. If you click and start to move your character, then hit the the letter Q. It will leave a trace behind you so you can figure out what the me measuring is. Oh. And if you need to do a path, you can hit Q again. It will drop a pin, and then the path continues from there. If you hit Escape, nice. you can cancel the movement. And I believe X will redisplay the movement. So wait, I was oh, here. Right. So if I press Q while I'm moving? That's right. So start to move it, then hit Q. You should see an arrow drag behind you. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's kind of cool, isn't it? It's cool. We were having this issue in, in the other game because uh, Pat does not use gridded maps. So we needed to find a solution for this. Fortunately, they had one. Hmm. Keeping in mind that you do need to move along um, actual solid paths. Interesting. It's, hmm, it's not working. It might be shift X, I'm not sure. Hmm. Ah, yeah. Okay. Nice. Did not know that. Um That's why I figured I'd mention it. it's pretty handy. Yeah. Well that means I have I moved twenty five feet, so I'm uh disengage with my bonus and take a step back. Okay. You see Actually, no. I will give um, Medric advantage on what he tries. By what? Um, I will tell him what did not work for me. Okay. Because so you... I can give advantage from 30 feet away. Yep, so you shout back at Medric. What do you shout? Physical stuff doesn't work. Okay. Okay. Uh, that is your turn? Yeah. The thing beside you twitches, ready to act. I'm just going to make sure I remember which one it is. There you go. Uh, as its limbs seem to shift in and out, rather than just moving each of its individual legs, it's almost as though they cease to exist in one place and reappear in another, in this sort of semi-shadow, um, semi semi-insubstantial uh, way. Um, two of its, uh, yeah, two of its, uh, back limbs seem to twist and turn and throw out towards you, uh, almost looking like it tries to entangle you. Let's see. Oops. One of the limbs uh, kind of snaps out towards you. And even though it seems to be insubstantial for the moment, you're still able to easily predict where it's going to land. And it misses. The other one, however, a lot closer. What is your AC? Uh, 15. Oh, well, there you go. Maybe meets beats. Uh, as the limb latches onto you and the shadow seems to swirl around your chest and grab, tight, grab tightly. Let's see. 
you take five bludgeoning damage and three piercing damage as the shadow's interior edge seems to spike up slightly. Uh, you are grappled and restrained uh, and being held in place by it. I need to make sure that... Let's see if I have the right token for that. Uh, I added new, uh, there we go, new little tokens to uh, represent things. All right, uh, that is its turn. It seems content in holding you there. Medric, you see shadowy uh, uh, limb reach out and grab a hold of your friend. That's not good. That is a good conclusion. What would you like to do about it? I will. Yeah, this is work. Hey, that works. Cool. Yeah, we should probably deal with these uh, critters before attempting to heal the crystals or light the beacons. So I'll cast a spiritual weapon um, next to the uh, spirit crusher. Oh, yeah. Did we ever establish what that looks like? Yeah, it's a flaming hammer, basically. Uh, well, the, it kind of like spins around slowly in the air, except when it attacks, it goes a little faster. But it don't actually have a uh, an icon for it, right? Oh, right, right, yeah. Uh, so I will use this icon. Okay. Uh, whereabouts That's is watery. it? That's watery. That's all I have. <laughs> I have an orb of storms handy. I don't have a, a hammer of flame. I will write that down to add hammer of flame. Uh, whereabouts is it? Oh, actually, I will give you control over that so you can... Uh, uh, there we go. You should be able to move that now where it should be. Okay. Yeah, it's right next to the um, spider, the blue one. Okay, and next to the crystal. It's actually yeah, but next it... to both spiders. Excellent. But yeah, it's going to attack the, the spider holding Annie. Okay. Do I add my proficiency bonus to that and strength, or just a proficiency bonus? Uh, it's not your strength, it's the weapon's attack. Okay. So whatever that uh, spell is, I'll have to check that. Oh, for the attack roll? For spiritual yeah. weapon, yeah. It's, a, it's whatever your spell attack would be, so proficiency and, and wisdom. Okay. Okay, so that's just plus four. Oof. Um... Okay, yep. That definitely oh, is. Yeah. And then the damage is D8 plus wisdom modifier. Yep. All right. As the hammer takes a large chunk out of it, you can see that the hammer physically just sort of passes right through it, but the trailing flame seems to disp dis disperse some of its ethereal nature. And I'll go up. With shield raised. Guess I hadn't moved yet. Yep. Okay, make sure you're tracking the length of time the spiritual weapon will last to. It lasts for ten rounds. Ten rounds? Yeah. So you boogie on up. You still have your action. Uh, I'm pretty sure I used it to... Spiritual weapon is a bonus action. I thought it was a bonus action to attack, not to cast an attack. Nope. It is to cast it. Yep, but it gets a free okay. attack on its first arrival. Yep. Nice. And after that, it's a bonus action to move and attack. Okay. Yep. In that case, um, <laughs> I will not use the shield. I'll, I'll grab the warhammer with two hands. Okay. And Against the uh, as it's labeled there, the burrowing nightmare. Yep. And how big is that? Like you said, it's like four feet wide. Four feet wide. Again, it, it, that's a general yeah. distinction because its limbs and its body seem to shift in and out of existence. All right. So it doesn't seem super heavy, in other words. So what I will do, um, <laughs> holding the warhammer with two hands, I'm gonna like take a mighty swing at the spider, kind of like from underhand. 
and I'm not going to try to hit it with the proper part of the Warhammer. I'll turn it sideways so I can, like, golf swing its ass into the blue. Okay. I appreciate the detail. <laughs> it'll, like, get, it'll get it out of the way, then we can light the beacons. All right. Long screen. So long screen. <laughs> With bated breath, we under under uh, we wait for the par on this particular creature. <laughs> it's gonna see be a par a, one to send it into the birdie. Strong. Whack. All right, How that far is far very definitely a hit. It's not quite enough to uh, to to send it sprawling backwards, but it is a very solid hit. All right, that was a right. Sorry, I haven't rolled for damage yet. Yeah, that was just the hit roll. Plus my strength bonus. Okay. Okay. Come on. Okay. So it looks like seven. And what weapon is this? This is just your Warhammer, right? Yeah, Warhammer, but two-handed. So that's the D10 okay. instead of D8. Um, I only add my strength bonus to that, right? That's right. Okay. Uh, that's why uh, uh, you do this. You, you you line it up and you tee up. And you're pretty sure that you hit it straight in the, through the body. But you find that the, the uh, hammer re meets very little resistance as it floats on through. It seems to have disrupted some of the patterns of its shadow, but not by as much as you expected. Almost as though it's somewhat in, insubstantial. I really wanted to see it go flying. <laughs> <laughs> I did too, actually, but... Growing spider? Air spider. All right. So that's your bonus move and action. Yep. Uh, in front of you, the burrowing nightmare. Let's see. What would it like to do? Uh... Hmm. Okay. Uh, it uh, seems to sink in rapidly into the ground, all of its legs kind of flailing as it as it dips in and bur burrows into the ground beneath you, and then reappears here, behind both of you. Uh, as it does so. Uh, you can kind of, for a moment, there's a bit of tension as you don't know where it's gone. And then suddenly its limbs start to poke up and crawl and pull itself out of the, the earth. Not damaging the earth that's here at all. Almost as though it, it moves in another plane of existence. But as it moves upward, you can see those first couple of limbs crackling with uh, lightning and crackling with, with energy. And then as it pulls its body out of the ground, a burst of electricity... Uh, shatters around it. I would need... Uh, uh, you're restrained, so you don't have... Uh, just check on restrained. I believe you automatically fail on dex. Uh, can't benefit from dex rolls. Disadvantage on dexterity saving throws. Okay. So, both of you make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, Ooh. And no. Is, oh wow. Oh wow. Okay. Let's see how bad this gets. Uh, yeah, this could be very bad. That is the opposite of what we want to hear during the first turn. <laughs> yep. Uh. So each of you take ten points of lightning damage. I am at nine. Uh-oh. All right, I forgot the roll uh, for the fire damage earlier. For the fire... Oh, for you... Oh, yeah, that's right. You take... Yeah. You said it was a D4 now, or...? Yeah. And you're only taking half damage on it, yeah. so... Two D4... Damn it, now I get max numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so only, only three points, though. It's half damage. Yeah. However, uh, you did take another additional ten from this creature. As yeah. it seems to have snuck up behind you. Uh, that's its turn. Silas, you can see a creature has just shaken the two of your friends. Uh, quite substantially, actually. 
Huh. Well, uh, wellity, wellity, wellity. <laughs> um, oh, shoot, I should have had that. Where's the spells? Okay. Um, because I think I can help. Uh, uh yeah okay um well i am going to let's see one two three four five uh i really like to be up here but uh six and I am going to cast uh, where's my name for it? There we go. Pass from sight. And uh, Annie turns invisible. Hmm, okay. That's an odd one. I like it. It's invisibility. <laughs> Looking to see if I can find. Oh wait, she's grabbed by something. She is okay. grabbed by the thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, the illusion, uh, invisibility wouldn't likely help anything. Uh, crap. Well, then I'm just gonna venomous burst it. Okay. Hey. Crappy damage, but a really good attack roll. So, two poison damage. Uh, as uh, the poison washes over it. Oops. From a d12. Wow. You don't get your uh, modifier on that one? No, no. D&D uh, &D cantrips usually don't add the modifier. Well, it does hit, and you can see that along some oh. of these strange... Uh, insubstantial wisps of energy that it seems to be making uh, make, made out of little green uh, swirls start appearing and it kind of twitches in that direction in that really creepy way that, that insects will do sometimes which are sort of like uh, vibrating in place mm -hmm. uh, that's your move okay. action do you have a yeah, I don't think I have any bonus actions so. okay, Annie you're being held by this on one side and shocked on the other by, by this creature what would you like to do? I would like to uh, try to... Hmm. Can I use acrobatics to try to get out? Uh, you can indeed. Cool. I would like to try to do that. Okay. Your difficulty is oh. more than eight. <laughs> uh, and actually... Uh, yeah, it doesn't affect... Yep, so it doesn't make it a disadvantage, but you rolled an 8, unfortunately. As you try to wriggle and writhe, this weird rope that's around you defies kind of slipping out of. There's nothing to really get a grab on as you find your feet slightly held off the ground. Um, and I will give Silas advantage, because he seemed to do a decent his attack seemed to hit as much as it should have. We did forget that uh, Medric had advantage on his attack roll, but he hit anyway. Um, make a, uh, just a roll 1d20 to see if it was a uh, critical success. Mm. I can find it here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Unfortunately not. You were still somewhat Getting thrown. Getting fucking once today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, the, uh, yeah, okay. That is Annie's turn as she shouts over to uh, Silas. What is the shout this time? This is really bad. Please do something. <laughs> Fair. Uh, the creature that has a hold of you... Uh, is going to lash out 
at. Uh, yeah, I can roll that here. Um, lash out lash at out. Silas, trying to grapple. Oh, does this grapple the other? There you go. There's a one in your favor, as it Woo! launches okay. outward and is unable to do so. Um, it's happy with where it is, so it's going to move on to Medric's turn. Okay, the spiritual weapon is going to attack the spider holding Annie. Okay. okay. Again. God damn it. <laughs> It was in plus five, was it, or like it's only my wisdom and score that I add? Oh, oh, it, it hits wisdom, wisdom and perception, or sorry, wisdom and uh, proficiency. Okay. Yeah, your spell attack. Whoa, hey, yo, it's a critical. That is absolutely a hit. <laughs> so that's uh, what? D eight plus two. Uh, two D eight plus two. Yeah. yeah. Schmuck. There you go. Uh, as the spiritual weapon goes flying on through, the flames seem to ignite, perhaps coming in contact with the poison introduced to it by Silas. And the little uh, burning uh, uh, lines flow throughout its entire being, incinerating it in an instant. It is dead. Annie, you are no longer being held. Hey. Little bastard. <laughs> and I will grab your hammer. <laughs> Two-handed again. And this time hit the burrowing spider like with the proper end and just like bring it straight down. All right, nothing fancy this time. Just kind of hit it. No, I guess it didn't work last time. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that is a hit. Woo! And plus strength. Oh, the D10 was not super useful, but yeah, it's better than missing, I suppose. And again, it, it seems as though it passes nearly entirely through the creature, uh, but does does have some effect on the way through. Yeah. You still have your move, if you'd like? No, I'm good, kiss. Yeah, we get an, atta an attack of opportunity anyway. Probably. Although, uh, can I move the spiritual weapon? Uh, as the bonus action part of your... your yes. Yep. Yeah, it's making the attack. You can move it up to 20. Technically, yeah, that's all right. You can... I think it says move and then attack, but I'm not going to be too much of a stickler on that. And as a bonus action, can I just grab my shield again? That is your bonus action to deal with the okay. spiritual weapon. Okay. okay. I'm done. Uh, now it's turn. It sees that it is now surrounded, which is the odd turn of, of its moment. Uh, and it dives into the ground. Uh, let's see. Uh, Do we get attack of opportunities? <laughs> you actually don't. No. Uh, yep. As the ground itself seems to welcome it. Uh, and let's see. I'm going to... Uh, and it moves out of sight leaving you in the room. Silas. Um, One thing, um, it looks as though for Silas and Medric, you're not updating the hit points on the character sheet, so they're not reflected on the icons either. I have. <laughs> hmm. He had 18 before. Okay. Because it should be a bar that's tied to your, hit, your HP. Uh, if you click on the token and then click on where like the number is hmm. and then just write like minus whatever and then enter it will update the bar okay yeah i just updated mine manually yeah it should also reflect that whatever you do in the character sheet too but yeah um i i find that it it works one way and not the other fair. so it'll update the character sheet if i do it on the token but it won't update the token if i do it on the character sheet Fair. Okay. Or you might not have your token selected for to yeah. effect. Good to know. Um, yeah, so just so I have a visual reference as well, it'd be great if you could keep those ones up to date. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I can see mine like a little lower now or yours yeah. is now eighteen of twenty four. Yep. Um still it should be thirty one because I leveled. of uh thirty one? Okay. 
yeah. can update that. Um, yeah, what is your current so one level ago. Uh, hit points, uh, Silas? 23. Out of 23. Okay, so that is right. And then for yep. Annie? 9 out of 27. So that's correct as well. Awesome. Okay. You uh, have a moment here. There's no creatures immediately around you. Silas, looks like you've moved up to the crystal. Yep. Um, it's going to make an arcana roll to see if it can figure out how to charge it up. Okay. Oof. Nice. As you study this pattern of flowing energy in what seems to be a crystal only in projection, you take your finger and kind of swirl a little bit, and it seems as though you can align some of the magic uh, within it in a way which allows it to flow and become brighter. You have learned that Arcana is one of the skills you can affect this with. And that is my turn. Annie. Oh. Uh, I would like to use a bonus action to um, drink a potion of healing. All right, then. Glug, 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 glug. Glug, 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 glug. Slightly strawberry taste is a little sickly sweet, mm -hmm. but it feels really good when your limbs become a lot less bloody. Cool. Um. And. Uh, I would like to try to interact with this crystal again. Um, I would like to see if religion works. Okay. Nine. You're trying to interpret the symbols. They're swimming around, but not staying in the fixed forms. It's almost like it's constantly repeating itself. The insight you do get is that if you are able to understand those symbols, then you could actually manipulate this correctly. It does appear to be religious in nature. Cool. Uh, um, and yeah, that's my turn. Okay, the spirit crusher is gone. Uh, Medric. I'll also try religion, but in a different manner. Like, because the beacons are supposed to be lit, kind of like a flame, right? That is a reasonable assumption. Yeah. So Medric is going to like focus on the studying he's been doing with the flamekeeper and picture a flame in his mind, put his hand around the crystal, and try to like form it into a flame. So it's kind of like using religion, but in a different manner. Okay. And like you... reshape it into. Uh, the Blessing of Ignis is you will get uh, advantage on this roll. Woo! <laughs> that's a lot of button pressing. Ooh, that's the first one. Do you want to try for a second roll? You do have advantage. Yeah, first okay. one was better. First one was better. Uh, Hopefully as... your character sheet should work. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as you... Um, as you kind of take a cue from what uh, Annie has said, um, also remember that Silas technically had advantage on that roll, but we'll we'll save that advantage for his next roll. Uh, or it's only one at a time, is that the way, or one per round, or does it go away? How does that work? Uh, it's, just next, uh, it's just the the next uh, action. Okay, so we'll we'll save that for the moment. You can't re reinvigorate somebody. However. As you reach out and kind of take the religious symbols and the, the metaphor of the beacon and the crystals in front of you, it isn't so much from the religious angle because while you are a believer and while you are involved in that, as you said, the technical stuff kind of flies over your head a little bit. But you instinctually kind of reach out almost as though you're trying to coax the flame into light. And sure enough, it does grow in front of you. And there is a spike of energy as it brightens and then seems to glow internally and then whoosh, this power rolls out through the room. In this room, all of you find all of your hit points restored. Woo! Yay! Uh, that is your action. You've moved a little bit to move closer. Um... Also, the help action is until the start of my next turn. Do we see the spiders? Um, from there, you can just make out where that burrowing spider 
uh, had uh, had moved to. And you also have right. two exits from this room. There's one that goes to the sort of north uh, east, and one that goes to the sort of southwest, but it turns south. So you do have a bit of movement left, Medric, or you can wait for the rest of them. Yeah, I'm gonna wait for the rest of them, but uh, I'll keep the spiritual weapon close to me the entire time. Okay. We'll just move it over here then. Yeah. All right. Um, where you saw that creature, uh, it does appear to vanish um, within. Uh, I need to. All right. We go to Silas's turn. This room seems to now be at full strength, and the, the light is beaming quite brightly from it. The refreshing energy wave washed over you as well. Uh, did we notice which direction the burrowing thing was going, or did it go down and then just disappear? It went down and disappeared, but both you and okay. Medric had noted its tail, essentially, or its, its, its rear end uh, from down south below you. Well, uh, so... Uh, um, which do we want to go north or south? Uh, the bug went south. Uh, do we want to go away from the bug or towards the bug? There's probably going to be more. Maybe it went towards another crystal that we have to light. Hmm. And is the beacon like bright enough to allow us to see the rest of the room? This room especially, yes. There's no hidden shadows in this room. Okay. Yeah, like I think the the one we're in has a wall around it. And as actually you look around, you can kind of see the light almost seeping into the walls, uh, almost uh, uh, strengthening them. And they seem to glow slightly. Cool. Uh, so do I see a door or something down to the south? Or uh, Yeah, maybe you can't see that. There should be an opening. Basically, that space, that space, okay. and that space are open. And there's one okay. space there. Maybe you can't see. Yeah, it. I don't. Yeah, I don't see any openings anywhere. Weird. Um, okay, I go one, two, three, four, five. All right. Uh, oh, now... actually, uh, actually, can he see into this next room here? Yeah. yeah. So you can't. I can't see what you see. So I, I can't tell where the where the lighting is not working. What I will do is I'm going to turn off dynamic lighting as much as I like it as a feature. It's so hard for me to actually gauge. Uh, what I would ask is just do not pay attention to things you cannot see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been doing that. We, we can see the entire screen, so we know where the stuff is. Oh, okay, okay. Um, basically, if, if that's the case, I didn't really need to turn that off. But um, anytime this uh, this kind of floating stone crosses over, it actually meets at the top of the wall, so you can see down over. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't so have time the, to remove the walls. It's hard to do in dungeon drafts, so I just yeah. kind of drew the stuff over them. Okay. Like, the idea okay, is that the, so. the, the upper, these are, are, are level a little with the top of the walls. Okay, well, how tall are the walls? Uh, they're like two feet. They're not that tall. Okay. Okay, so we actually could see further around if, yeah. if it's only two. Okay. Where, where, where those are, yes, they, they tend to get uh, higher at the sides. Yeah. In that case... I'm just going about that far and going. Yeah, you see two. Oh, of them. hey, yeah, there's bugs. <laughs> I see bugs. At this point. Uh, I wish I had my shield uh, now. Um, yeah. Yeah, actually, I'll make that easier. I don't really have much for an action. Um Actually, I will hold my action until Annie passes by, and then I'm going to make her invisible. Okay. Use its spell for for that. Uh, actually, I'm going to make her and me invisible. All right. Has to at level two. Oh, no, sorry. Just one person. I keep forgetting. So it'll just be Annie. So uh, I say, yeah, this, oh, we've got, uh, yeah, there's bugs all over. <laughs> all 
All right. Uh, Annie, you're up next. You hear this warning. There's bugs all over. Oh, fun. Um, Squish them. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. And then I guess I'm invisible. As you pass. Uh, around, yeah. It, it, yeah. If you pass within five feet of me, I'll reach yeah, out. So finish I task. there. Is invisibility a, uh, a ranged spell or a touch? Nope, touch. Okay, so you reach out and touch her shoulder and yep. she becomes invisible. Yeah. That's for... It is concentration, five. though, right? Yep. And it'll go away once she uh, makes an attack. Yep. Uh, so I'm going to go here. Um, and then... And that's you see my... another one of those bugs kind of hanging out there. Oh, fun. Um, I'm invisible. Um, hmm. uh, just, you know, I'm not invisible. Okay. You're concentrating, though, which is what that icon is for. Yeah, oh, that's, that's the concentration one. Okay. Yeah. And there's the invisibility one. Yay. You're not concentrating. Yeah. <laughs> you may be thinking hard, but you're not concentrating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what do I want to do? Because I can't get around these two, right? I would have to. Uh, there's not quite enough space to, well, actually, no, you could, you could try to sneak around them. Uh, then you get a chance to notice you. Yeah. Um. Although you came from. I can dash though. That's true. Yeah. Um, so instead, I am going to take the. They already have disadvantage to hit me anyway. Yep, and you have advantage to hit them. Yep. Um. Do do do. Sorry, brain is. <laughs> it's all right. We started early. <laughs> yeah. Brain is starting to wake up, but still slow. Hmm. Uh, I will. Yeah. How big are these crystals? Uh, the first one that you saw was only a couple of feet wide. That is. Well, how point. tall? But four feet tall. Okay, so it'd be possible for someone to try hiding behind them. Okay. Yes. So, is can you see my path now? Yep, I is can that see something I can do? You can. At the point you get here, I will have this one make a uh, a, a sense roll, essentially. Uh, let's see. How good are they at that? Eh. Uh, and you make a sneak roll? Ish. Uh, it's rolling a disadvantage, so. Yo. Uh, but I have advantage to stealth. Correct? Uh, does it give both ways? I think it does, actually. Let's check on that. Uh, I think it would just be one way. Uh, invisible. Uh, um, impossible to see because it's hiding. Creature is heavily obscured. Possible to see and obscured. Can you detect by any noise it makes? Uh, yeah, so I'm heavily obscured. Which would be its disadvantage on yeah. perception. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it only cool. only well, you don't get advantage, it gets disadvantage. Cool, cool. <laughs> Not a problem. Nice. <laughs> As you sneak on by pretty easily. Cool. Uh so um I would like to, while well, it's all intelligent stuff, which I am not good at. Um, Don't tell the spiders that. Um, <laughs> I will give Silas advantage. So since you have to shout for that, that will give away your position. Oh, yeah, that would... Yep. Hmm. 
yeah, there's nothing much I can do, but I am here. Yeah. Okay. And I think... Uh, if you wanted to hold your action, that would be another possibility. Uh, you can't hold a bonus action, though. Oh, yeah, never mind. Right. Bonus action is to dash, yeah. so... Awesome. Um, yeah. I can move to here, actually. Okay. You could actually move to the other side of it there if you wanted to, because you move straight over. Um, that would okay. give you additional obscurement. Basically, you're completely obscured at that point. Cool. I will do that then. Okay. Uh, you still have your action, though. Um, I will... Yeah. There's nothing much I can really do from here. I just... Yeah, I'll... I'll... I might as well try to make a religion roll okay. to try to put yep. together. Yeah, no. Yeah, unfortunately, the symbols are moving too quickly and are too foreign to you. All right. And it's my brain, so. <laughs> it's not one of the things you were drilled in. You actually skipped most of those lessons. <laughs> uh, Yo. Medric. Medric, you're up. I don't know why my thing is staying there. Oh, your measurement? Is that yours? That's somebody yeah. else's, I think. That is mine. Oh. So, uh, I can see the bugs from where I am, right? Uh, no. You're blocked by this wall, and you're blocked by this wall. You could see it when it was here. Okay, there we go. But it moved out of your vision. Okay, so... You can definitely see them there now. Okay. The so I got ten part. feet left, but the spiritual weapon... Two, three, four, can just barely make it. All right. That's going to attack the spider. You see a new copy of the spider, not the same one you had fought before. Uh, do we still see the one we fought before? Yeah, that's the one with the red dot on it. Okay, so it's like underrode. Yes, it came up out of the ground. And the spiritual weapon swings the mighty flaming hammer and Oof. hits. Yay. All right, and once again, it is almost the, the 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 weapon's flames itself, or the spiritual flames, that seem to do more damage than the impact. Cool. Can I occupy the same space as the spiritual weapon? Yeah, I don't see why I don't. not. But unless has a different. Opinion. I think it's a thing. It, but it is a I thing. don't know if you could stay there. You could pass through it, but you couldn't stay there. It'd be like okay. another character. Basically, it's it's moving and occupying this space. Also, keep in mind that the spiritual weapon's damage is all force. Uh, so it's not bludgeoning uh, or flame, technically. Yep. All right. So I'll go here, then. I'm next to both spiders, but whatever. So shield up, and I will swing the hammer at the one I just attacked. Okay, so one-handed on the hammer. Yeah. The hammer comes down. Wait. Nice. Oh, yeah, that's definitely a hit. Hey, max damage. Nice. As the hammer flies through... Unfortunately, unlike the spiritual weapon, this one is not on fire and doesn't seem to be as impactful. Uh, that is your move and bonus and action. Yep. Their turn. Let's now see. I'm bracing for impact with my shield up. <laughs> uh, the one that, uh, let's see, the one you had fought before is just going to lunge forward towards you and attempt to bite. It's sort of like a bite, except for the fact that uh, its mandibles are overly large, and as it passes through you, we'll see. As it passes through you, it doesn't so much rend flesh as you feel the underlying spirit of your form start to uh, shred. Let's see. I got 19 AC with the shield up, though. Uh, oh, yeah, all right. Uh, as, the, Ooh, I'm glad as, the solid, as the solid idea of your shield, the little symbol on your shield seems to glow a little bit. 
uh, as it repels the attack. Uh, the other one, the other one though, is going to take the same the same approach. Uh, and similarly, it uh, does not uh, pierce the shield. Good job. All right, Silas, you're up. Uh, okay. Well, move a little closer. Uh, and I am. Uh, which of those two bugs looks in better condition? Uh, definitely the one you hadn't faced before. So the one to the top. Okay. Then I am going to hit it with some frost uh, and cold snap it. Uh, the cold yeah. snap does hit. Now, uh, ignore any dice rolls. It wasn't supposed to roll a die roll. I told <laughs> it not to. Uh, it's a constitution save against 13. So okay. this may not be nearly as effective as, as I was hoping. Now gonna figure. Oh, yeah, okay. No attack roll. Thirteen. Then it saves and takes nothing. All right. The cold seems to shiver over its form, but you see, uh, the limbs that were affected by it kind of vanish out of existence and reappear elsewhere. And just as a note, uh, okay, that's how venom. Uh, that's how my uh, poison attack works as well. So, uh, let me just roll it again. Make sure I've got that. Fixed for there we go. No attack roll, just DC thirteen. Okay. So yes, that was some movement, and yeah, he'll stay where he is. So, uh, yeah, he will be acting as support. Okay, Annie. It looks as though the spiders are being entertained by Medric at the moment. Yep. I only have physical attacks, so I'm going to continue to try to understand these glyphs. Okay. Good idea. Twelve. A breakthrough. You suddenly put together a couple of symbols and go, oh, wait a minute. That's supposed to represent life. That is the flow of energy. I think that's a plant. And you kind of manage to turn them and manipulate them together. Uh, and you see some of the symbols start to line up and organize, and it glows a bit brighter. Was your action? Yeah. Uh, Does that break invisibility? Is it any action? Uh, I don't think so. I think it's only attacks and spell casting. But okay. uh, yep. perfect. Yep. An invisible Double thief, check. a dangerous thief. This is cool. Yep. Um, but doing anything else that I can do would uh, break my invisibility. So. At least reveal your I position. The invisibility stays, but you, now they have a chance to yeah. find you're there. So, yeah, uh, the spell ends for a target that attacks or casts a spell. Perfect. Cool. That's good this enough. This is a combo I gotta watch out for. This is cool. <laughs> um, because yeah, I. The best I can do is shout and give someone advantage. Um, okay, you can move or you can do a bonus at this point. Yeah. But if you don't have any, uh, you can you can hold. Well, you can't really hold either one. So. Yeah. Uh, so I will go here. Okay. Uh, tell get, uh, tell Medric that uh, I've I've got the the crystal. Uh, you keep fighting them. Well, I I think that first of all when you were able to manipulate the crystal, it did grow brighter, and visibly so. So Medric and, and Silas would have seen that. Well, it's to give him advantage. Oh, okay. Are you going yeah. to shout so it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I, I go here to tell him that uh, I've, I've got this, you keep distracting them. Because uh, I realized that it didn't break my invisibility. Uh, so I'll go there so that I can go back one, two, three. Okay. I will and have them make uh, perception checks. You can make your stealth check again. Yeah. That's one of them. Natural 20. Gee, Natural no 20. Problem. 
both of them, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, seem, seem to perk up and sort of notice something in that direction, but not seeing anything and seeing the thing in front of them, it appears they didn't uh, pay any attention to it. So, and Medric has advantage. And Medric has advantage. Well, it is Medric's turn. Cool, cool. So the bottom spider, the spiritual weapon will attack it. Okay. Uh, I don't think you could move. Well, I suppose uh, you could spend five of its movement to go up. I suppose. Yeah. Never mind. Hmm? Ignore me. Um, There's no real ceiling here, and it kind of. I think they fly, don't they? Yeah, that's how we handled it the other game. That's a ten to hit, so it's not that great. It, it is your first attack. Or your your first ability. That I get advantage on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that second one is a lot better. Thank you, Annie. That's a hit. It's what I do. It's literally <laughs> what this character is built to do. <laughs> Direct people to do things. Nice. That's damage. That's damage yeah. There you go. As the uh, the weapon comes this time kinda of mimicking what you were doing before with the golf swing. <laughs> as it sort of reaches down and it's trying to turn sideways and gives a flaming, essentially a flaming uppercut though, as it doesn't connect with anything physical, but it does seem to rend a significant amount. You kind of get the sense of the limbs trying to reconnect to a thorax, which is only partially there now. If in anything, however, it does appear to be even creepier, as you have multiple eggs, all tr- multiple legs trying to connect on to the body that's not quite there. However, it was a substantial hit. Uh, it is still your turn, Medric. You have an action and a move. Okay, uh, I'm going to Sacred Flame the same spider. So it's a dex save. I believe it's a dex save for it. Yep. And the DC's only 12. So hopefully it rolls poorly. Okay. At least that damage won't be resisted, though. It rolled poorly. Oh. Wow. D8 plus. I'm pretty sure it's a straight up D8. I just want to double check that. Yeah. Uh, for um... sacred flame. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so a cant- cantrip. So yeah. And that's radiant. Yep. Nice. <laughs> you just have to get those ones out of the way early, I guess. <laughs> oh, that's the rule. Yeah, yeah, it takes seven. Yeah, as the sacred flame lights within it, it's kind of similar to uh, before, it seems to burn up and cascade the, and burn the little uh, glowing uh, glowing limbs away from it as well. i got to remember that i got to gesture towards the camera if I'm going to make hand motions here. I know, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, but it does seem to burn to a cinder and vaporize. Go, Medric! Uh, you do have Woo. movement left. I'll go around. Yeah, I'll just move to where its body used to be. Okay, standing over the empty space of its wisping smoke. Yeah, because I don't want to get too far away from the other spider to give it an attack of opportunity, and I can't stay in the same space as my weapon, so. That is your turn. The other one. Uh, begins to sort of swirl in place. Little lightning arcs start to wrap around it. Uh-oh. Uh, as it uh, seems to emit lightning, kind of like the one before each of you. This would be... Uh, what is the range? Uh, oh, ho, ho. Uh, it's a good thing they didn't notice where you were, Annie, because you're not going to have to roll this. But Medric <laughs> and Silas are going to have to make dexterity saving throws. Ah oh, man, there's a bad roll again. Uh, Do you not have a bonus for your uh, your dex? No. No. Ooh, okay. No, he doesn't have that one. Uh, I don't have magic. a negative. It's not a bonus. Is that magic? It is magic, or would be considered magic. Okay. Uh, as you take 19 points of lightning damage, oh, that was nearly oh. max. Uh, so 12 is not enough. Uh. Oh, sorry, it's advantage. Uh, 12 is not enough, unfortunately. Okay. As the Ouch. kind of scratches over both of you quite substantially. I go from unharmed to four hit points. <laughs> that is its turn. Silas, you're In up. concentration. Oh, yeah, make a concentration check. Yep. 
So it would be uh, an 18? So nine, so 10. Or, sorry. Uh, yeah, it would, it would be 10. That's right, half damage or 10, which is worse. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay. Um, for invisibility, is there, it's like an hour duration, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. I wonder if I wrote that then. Remember, you're checking, you're keeping track of your spiritual weapons duration. Yep, it's uh, at four rounds now. Okay. Uh, Silas, you are rocked by lightning, which crawled across the floor. Nerg. Um. Huh. Well, this is probably technically a better idea, so I'll use my bonus action to empower my staff, and then I will jump down in and take a swing at it. Okay. Because... Ooh. Just about my best chances, so. Uh, and yes, that's the magical bludgeoning from the shillelagh. Nice. nice. Uh, so, yeah, you yeah. jump down in, uh, effectively cry bloody murder, and, uh, <laughs> and swing your staff at it. That is a nasty hit. Uh, yeah. Actually, yeah, that kills it. As the staff swishes <laughs> through it, and uh, and uh, yeah, reduces it to nothing more than an empty air. Silas so is like, <laughs> cool. Uh, I just as... looked at like little tiny Silas jumping in like with a stick and crack, and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> even a, him on the back. Good job, man. Yeah, even a blind dog finds a bone once a day. I don't know. Um, yeah, I I think it would have killed us next uh, if it got a chance. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it was like. trying to kill you anyway, so yes. Yes, but I think it would have succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, hang on now. Uh, yeah, actually, we're effectively out of combat time at this point. So who wants to make the roll to see how long it takes before you can finish off this crystal? I mean, I would make one right away because it's my turn after That's that. That's true. Go for it. So, Another one turn. Eureka. That was not tree... That was another form of life. It was like living energy of the tree. And once again, the uh, crystal lights up brighter. The light flashes across the room. Uh, and one of the reasons we do have to track this is actually for spiritual weapon. Um, yeah. And once again, you find the energy filling the room and your health is restored to full. Yay. How many rounds do I take for uh, filling, for uh, lighting the, be the beacon? It only took us one more there, but the previous one was two. So I think your spiritual weapons actually used six rounds. Okay, yeah, that's what I have to. Okay. Yeah. So let's go four left. Yep. Um, and yeah, let's continue on. Uh, me being invisible, if I I can't make any magical attacks, so I might as well try to get these going while you guys do the magic -y thing. That works. Sure. To do much. Also, although if that if those do that again, I don't know how how uh, how much longer I will be standing. But uh, yes, let's go. This is working for now. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep the spiritual weapon ten feet in front of me at all times, <laughs> okay, we'll or at count... least for the next four rounds. We'll count that as Annie's turn. Medric, you're up. So you're leading. And, and I would move to here. Okay. So okay, I guess I can't. Yeah. Eh. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Just in case we, we, we run into like more shit. Yeah. Okay, so you move up there. Yeah. Um, at that point, you see a bit of motion inside, but you can't make out the detail. All right. Um, I'm just going to run to use the washroom. Okay. You get advantage. <laughs> you still have the headphones too early. Uh, well, we do have... Uh, so, Medric, you moved and did your bonus. Did you want to take an action? An action can be another move. Or you can go full defensive. You said an action can be another move? Yes, it can. Yeah. Yeah. Mm 
Yeah, I'll stand defensively. Okay. Stand. Or can I move and then stand defensively? No. No. Defense is an action. It gives them disadvantage on attacks if they, if they okay. take any. Well, defense it is because that thing fucking hurt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, now, I'm wondering, we're reaching 2 o'clock. Uh, which we had said was going to be our likely uh, completion. I'll wait for uh, for uh, Marie to get back about whether we want to uh, move continuing through this. There's going to be m more combat involved here. There's more than uh, one yeah. man left. Um, uh, can I at least get my movement so I could move up behind? Yep, yeah, we can take your turn, actually, if you want. Uh, I don't really have anything else to do, but... Uh... And you're Let's tracking your uh, your shillelagh. Uh, that's not a concentration spell, is it? I don't think so. I think it lasts like a minute, but it's a bonus action to recast it. So uh, I'll let it drop for now. I'll just recast it whenever I need it. Um, it is not concentration and lasts for one minute. Yeah. I just want to make sure you didn't accidentally lose your invisibility for it. So. Yeah. Um. And you can also take a defensive stance, which would be a reasonable thing to do in this particular circumstance. Yeah, sounds good. All right, we'll wait for her to come back. But I, uh, oh, you're back. Look at that. Hello. So uh, I need to Sorry. No, no, that's <laughs> fine. Uh, but it did signal me to look at the clock, and the clock is approaching 2 o'clock. Yep. And whether we wanted to call it a day for today, there will be more involved in this space. Um, I don't think you would be getting through this in another while, although you guys are developing your tactics as you move along, so it is going a bit faster. Um, I would like to hear from, from each of you if you have a strong opinion one way or the other. I mean, I have nothing better to do. Brody <laughs> just left for work, so. It is starting to warm up a little bit. Um, oh, right. Which is one yeah. of the concerns that I had. I mean, it's up to you guys. I have a heat pump, so I don't realize like ninety nine percent of the time that it's warm outside. <laughs> yeah, same. So, we got we got like the central AC going. What I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to uh, go to the washroom myself, and so you guys can have a little chat. And when I'm back, we'll make the decision. All right, and chat cool. amongst yourselves. And if you want to chat to the audience, well, I'll do that too. Why not? I'll be back yeah. in a second. But yeah, like I have. A heat pump and a fan going yeah. so like i'm actually going to turn off that fan because i'm actually cold <laughs> forgot to turn that off when you woke up so but yeah no um you should get uh annie's new pickup on the uh the yes i'm not on my computer so i don't have it picture site thing that we set up um, yeah i keep i keep trying to come up with the word and i keep thinking of uh names for the company that other games use like pictogram I see. Uh, so i can't remember what the actual one was but uh but yeah we, we have that up there uh, we can put a link so people can see the pictures of pcs and npcs and such yeah I'm not on my computer, so. Yeah. Yeah, no, just whenever. Yeah. Um, but I, I can send it to you right quick if you want to do that now while we're thinking about it, because I will forget. Sure. Pinterest, that's what it's called. <laughs> yes, I remember. Oh, yeah, that. Um, where's how do attachments work? Uh, okay, let me go into my drive again. As we're continuing the game for now, like I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little bit hungry, but it doesn't like bother me too, too much. Like if we want to clear one more island, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can go for half an hour or so. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, it's up really to y'all because. I have no effect on the heat, and I'm not hungry, so. Okay. How are we doing? I'm just good at, at ignoring hunger. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had to go and say that. Now I'm hungry. Oops. Um, so, uh, how are we doing? What's the, what's the thought? 
not too bad. Like the heat isn't too bad for me or Marie. Like with yeah. your baby, we can clear another island or something. Okay, you can. We can always press on for say it. We'll yeah. Check. Like I said, I mean, I, I. Yeah, I could go for half an hour and see oh, how yeah. it's getting. Okay. Yep. Okay. There's the picture if you want to add a different address there. Okay. I feel like I missed something. That's okay. okay. I'm used to missing things. Oh, we were talking about adding the the picture to the pin. Yeah, yeah for a new okay. picture. Okay. So. Yep. All right. Uh, Annie had just moved, I believe. Yes. I would also give Medric the help action. Excellent. Okay. Kind of by making the plan. All right. You got a plan. This is great. All right. Uh, so that was your action and your move. You're going to choose to not do a bonus? Yeah. Okay. I need to add those. Is oops. Uh, and right. uh, typing things. All right, uh, that puts it at Medric's turn. I'll continue to creep forward slowly along with the spiritual weapon. One, two, three. Okay. What do I see here? Um, kind of, yeah, you can just make out the edge of something here. All right. Um, what about now? Uh, and now you can see something there and something different. Uh, hovering not far from the door itself. Uh, looks to be, uh, this time, kind of like taking a, uh, a a string of pure shadow and weaving it around in circles until it uh, uh, is kind of woven in on itself. It, in, in some ways, if it weren't so terrifying and ethereal, it would resemble a child's toy of a spider made out of wrapped string. But this wrap sting is constantly recoiling upon itself and twisting and turning. There's a, a nimbus around it, which seems to be of a, of a, a, a kind of a cloud or foggy-like nature as well. All right. Well, I, I don't like that one. And I, I know the first one that we are familiar with can hurt. So I'll just step back one. And the spiritual weapon will attack that spider, the lightning spider. Okay. That is a hit. Nice. Smack. As the lightning smacks through it, or sorry, the fiery uh, hammer slices through it. Uh, again, kind of that, that effect of burning through smoke. All right. Right, that's another round. Uh, that is your turn, Silas. Um, uh, do I still get an action, or sorry, do I still get an action because I was just moving the spiritual weapon? Oh, or does right. yes. count yes. as an action? Nope, you uh, still had some motion or still had some movement left, so you do have an action. Okay, I will. Sacred flame, the same spider. So it just you step saves the back, so you can't see it clearly. So I'll say you can do it, but it gets advantage on the on the die roll. Okay, I'll move back forward then. Okay. <laughs> Forgot about that. Yep. Uh, that, uh, sorry, what save is that? Dexterity. You got a 20, natural 20. Oh. Ooh. They're okay, well, learning. I guess spider back looks out of the way. <laughs> They're learning. All right. Um, so that is your turn uh, then, yeah. Silas. Uh, okay. Hmm. Well, I guess I will move up to there. Uh, so can I see the weave walker as well, or am I too far back? You have to be standing where Medric is to see it because the way the walls work right there. Okay. 
but I can see the burrowing nightmare. You can see it. Uh, it is partially obscured by the, the wall, essentially, right there. Same as where Medrick was. Okay, I thought the walkway was on top of the wall. Uh, yes, but the walls extend higher on the sides. Okay. Well, um, I don't really have much. Well, maybe I can, yeah. Uh, I am going to, where's my sheet? Okay, I am going to uh, use Minor Illusion. Hmm. Uh, just going to double check the range on that. Uh, yeah. Here we go. Oh, 30 feet. Okay. No problem. So, two, four, six. Uh, right over here, uh, I am going to make a uh, illusion of Annie's voice saying, uh, I've almost got it. <laughs> okay. To see if that distracts them. Interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, and that lasts one minute, no concentration. Okay. Uh, let's see how. Yeah, there's no real, no real performance role on that, is there? Is to to figure out how believable it is. No. Is there, uh, is there a save to see through? Oh, be your save DC actually. Thirteen. Thirteen. It's okay. not very good. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, that one's not convinced uh, let's see uh, but that one is okay <laughs> both sides of the spectrum there all right uh, that was an action and a move yes yep okay. that's it for me all right um, let's see actually it's a bonus action I'll recharge the staff why not all right. Uh, yep. Okay. Yeah, that's a cantrip, isn't it? That's that's kind of cool. I gotta remember that. Uh, let's see. So this guy. Uh, I can easily. Yeah, no problem. Uh, kind of leaps and glides over to where the sound was. Uh, and begins to attack. Uh, I suppose I can roll this. Uh, Don't I go before them? Uh, no. They actually leap into the scene at this point, and then they'll join normal initiative. Because they actually rolled okay. higher initiative, but... Um, and then we'll reset the initiative at this point, but Annie, you'll be up front. Uh, and it swings in open air, trying to hit something that's in that space. But apparently it cannot hit it. It isn't quite convinced that it couldn't. Uh, this one, however... Mm -mm -mm. Mm, what is its range? Yeah. This one burrows into the ground and disappears. So uh -oh. this guy. I move 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And reappears on the other side of Silas. Because these things always knowing attacking from behind is better. As it reappears on the ground once more, you see the lightning oh, starting to so swing up around it. Oh, never mind. Uh, okay, that's so, not good. Dexterity saving throw. And this time, Annie, it doesn't know you're there, but you're within its range. Uh... Okay, that is a fail. Uh, are they both a fail? 16 is not a fail. Sorry, I didn't see that one there. Uh, one from. No, I mean. Uh, uh, oh, you have advantage on this. Yes. Right. Uh, that is a success. Yay. That is uh, so good. And from Medrick, What's the range on that? Uh, 15 feet. Okay. <laughs> it 
fuck's sake. That's a lot of clicking. I'm having no luck with dexterity today. So, those of you who fail, which is Medric takes 13 points of lightning damage. The other two take six. Not nearly as deadly as it has been in the past. Mm. Uh, let's see. That was Mo. That is its turn. Also figured it out. You have to have your token selected for the HP to be affected on the token. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's like, yeah, okay. It kind of makes sense, I guess. Uh, but you can just edit it on the token, which is just as easy, I think. Yep. Uh, okay. That is its turn. And the other one is gone. So now I will reorder these. Just a moment. Descending. And once again. The, the that's true. It's just a 10 because you only took six yeah. damage, but. Um, yeah. Oh, no. unfortunately, the invisibility drops. No. Well, it worked for a little while. Yep. It was a really, really good tactic, actually. Uh, however, Annie, as this lightning passes over you, you find yourself revealed and the thing in front of you. And the, the, the hallway to the other room seems to be blocked by everyone. Yep. <laughs> At least you have a nice target right in front of you. Yep. Um, True. It is somewhat yep. damaged already, too. I'll try to hit it, then. All with right. a rapier. That's what I can do. That is definitely a hit. Oh, yeah. Uh, cool. Oh, it's but... almost critical. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, nice. So that plus sneak attack, because there's a person beside it. Yep. Yep. So 15. So 15. Nice. Even though you find the, the the end of the rapier kind of passing through it insubstantially, you kind of swirl it with a bit of extra kick, uh, tearing at some of these weird strands, and it does a pretty substantial uh, wound to it. Uh, it's still in front of you, but you can see now that the twisting strands of it are, are loosening at the ends, almost as though it's coming apart. Uh, you have cool. a bonus and a move. Um, I am... Uh... Going to be bold and not move. Okay. Uh, and I am going to give Medric. Actually, yeah, I'll give Medric advantage. Okay. What do you shout over at Medric this time? Shit, the plan has gone to shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Not uh, for long. <laughs> <laughs> that is your turn. Hit it, hit it, hit it dead. The other creature over there, let's see if it figures this out. It is not. Uh, that smart. What did I roll before? Yeah. I hope it doesn't because I don't want that asshole behind me. <laughs> uh, what is your save DC? Uh, Thirteen. Uh, unfortunately, it figures out this this illusion is 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 not a thing. But there were things back there. Uh, let's see. So it's going to come down here and move. Uh, hmm. Does that constitute an action? It's more of a reaction. Uh, yeah. So it is going to try to do something. Um, as this time you see the strands tighten and swirl uh, tighter and tighter, little sparks start emanating from its body. But the sparks don't turn into electric arcs. Instead, they seem to be tiny miniature little flames. And the whole body seems to writhe and twist, forming a, a, uh, a, a an egg-like shape that opens up at the end where its mandibles are. And it f sends... Uh, yep, that's straight ahead. So it sends a gout of flame uh, down the uh, line to just stopping with Silas. Actually, sorry, it wouldn't move because it wants to catch that. It knows it is there, so it will move this side. So we'll catch its own creature in the in the line. Uh, but a gout of flame comes spewing out from it. I need a dexterity saving throw from Medric, Silas, and my own creature. It's always dexterity. <laughs> yeah. Uh, usually, yeah, actually. Just, you know. Okay, 15. That's not bad. like kind of OP and Dan. Not gonna lie. Uh, is that magic? It is magical. It would be considered magical. Let's see. That one is dexterity. So let's see. 
Uh, <laughs> so the only one who actually fails is the creature on the other end. Uh, let's see here. Oh, wait. Is it those ones? Yes. Ooh, which is good. Uh, let's see. That is... Oh, man. Math. 18 points for those that failed, 9 who did for those that did not. That Ow. obliterates the creature at the other end. Uh, so is, is the damage rounded up? or like Because I got fire resistance. Uh, that's half damage, so half damage again for you. So 4 points. Four. Okay. Uh, but 9 points to Silas. Erg. Alright. Uh, that is... It's Annie, yes, Annie has no active condition. She didn't get hit by it. She's fine. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I changed in uh, D&D Beyond because D&D Beyond like, tells me what the condition is, so I follow my conditions there. Ah, uh, makes sense. Makes sense. All right, that's its turn. Move and that and done. And, okay, now Medric is I up. I took my invisibility off. <laughs> <laughs> I'll move into the room next to it. Okay. But, I'll attack with a spiritual weapon. All right. People have start, decided to start building something. Yeah. How dare they? That's, That's... not good as well. And you gave me advantage, right? Uh, yes. She shouted over the plan went to hell, and that was how you got advantage. Unfortunately, the plan going to hell was pretty obvious when the flames started flying, and unfortunately, the spiritual weapon does not connect. All right, let's see if the hammer connects then. Oh, God damn it. Fortunately not. Uh, as it seems to move in place, this time kind of inverting somehow, uh, so that uh, when you swing at it, it's suddenly in a different place. Uh, that is your move and action and bonus. Uh, we're up to Silas now. Well, yeah. Okay, I'm just. This worked last time. <laughs> I'm going to uh, oh, yeah. run up and smack it with my staff. All right. Wow, that is definitely a hit. <laughs> Not nearly as much damage, though, sadly. Nope. Uh, but the magic of the staff seems to interact with its weave and is slowly unweaving it. Very, very geez. slowly at that rate. Uh. Three, four. So yes, I will stop there. All right. Come save us, Annie. Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, I, Annie? I'm okay. <laughs> For now. Um. Yeah, I. Uh, I'm going to pop here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to pull out my short bow. All right. You fire off the okay. short bow. Uh, that unfortunately bounces off of, uh, or not bounces off. It kind of gets caught up in the swirling winds around it, and the arrow just goes flying off in a different direction. Ah, uh, good guys. Oh, uh, just Medric once again has advantage of like. Um, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it. <laughs> smoosh it, smoosh it, smoosh it dead. Uh, and I hide back around the corner. Probably a good <laughs> plan. Uh, let's see. I saw fire. Uh, let's see. It's target rich environment. Uh, let's see. The one with the hammer seems a little more dangerous. So we'll take a take a, a, a sort of lunging strike forward where half of the, the, the tendrils that form up its body kind of swoosh forward, almost trying to engulf you. Uh, let's see if it hits. Does a 15 hit you? Nope. Oh, I should roll this too. Yeah, the shield's up, so it's 19. Uh, you attacked last round, so the shield's not up. You yeah, I used, a, I used a Warhammer oh, with, with one hand. With one hand, okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, as it lunges forward, you see small little uh, uh, sparks of flame start to ignite along its body once more. 
Oh, wait. Uh, what? No, your spiritual weapon does force damage, doesn't it? Never mind. Yeah. Alrighty. Uh, that's its turn. The fire is just for style, but. Yep. Aegis Med- would be proud. Medric. All right. Spiritual weapon. All right. Spiritual weapon again, because I have advantage. Oh, hey! there you go. That definitely does better. So 2d8 plus 2. So the, the hammer spins in midair, and it almost looks as though it's trying to hit with the, the pommel part, but then dives forward and smashes into it. Still is a pretty substantial hit. Yeah. Um, as it begins to unravel, the flames growing larger on it, almost as though it is now on fire. And then Sacred Flame. It just has to sell their save dexterity. Right. Why is it always dexterity? I know, right? <laughs> uh, 19. So in its the unweaving... <laughs> they're not really. That's the funny part. Uh, it's just unweaving so rapidly you find it difficult to find a locust to actually focus on. You do have a move if you want to. No, I'm good. Okay. I'll just stand here with the shield and try to absorb as much damage as possible. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's fire there's fire coming next next round. I will mention that to my colleagues. All right. Silence. It's doing the fire thing again. This 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 warning comes to you. So don't don't stand behind me, pro tip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Uh, I am going to beat it with my staff again. <laughs> Ignominious death, but sure. <laughs> uh, that is definitely a hit, and that's enough to take it out. As you, uh, as the the, uh, the the hammer has kind of carved a pathway into it, and you kind of shove the uh, staff into it and wriggle around on its insides, and it just dis- dis- is destroyed. Silas the bug smasher. Like, like the wizard with melee has the most kills. <laughs> there you go. Never discount a wizard in melee. Uh, who, yeah, who has the one cantrip that makes that doable? <laughs> uh, yeah, after I splot him, I'll just come over here for okay. get that out of the way. Uh, Annie, you kind of peek around the corner. After this round. Uh, Annie, you kind of peek around the corner and you can see that it seems to have been missed. Or seems to have cool. been... It is missed now. It's dead. I will dash there. Let's keep this in order yeah. because we do have to worry about countdowns here. Yep. Uh, uh, I dash is my action. Yep. And then... Well, new. dash is your bonus, right? Yeah, d- dash is my bonus and then... This one seems action. more complicated than the other ones. Those familiar symbols you were trying to grasp onto just seem to be somehow missed. Okay, uh, that makes it Medric, who presumably is going to move over and give a try of some kind. Yeah. Does it look similar to the first one at all? They all look similar, but they are slightly different in each case. Uh, I need to... Right there. Okay, Medric. I'll do the same thing I did with the first one, like try to light it up as if it were a flame. Like... Ignis, help! Or at least I will use my training. <laughs> Maybe actually trying to remember what you were taught. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we are in a different dimension right now. There is no anxiety of having to recruit followers. I'm pretty sure they will not want spider acolytes at the temple. <laughs> is that a religion roll? Or? Uh, yes. Okay. It is, is one of the things you know will work. That's not the only skill that will work on this, but actually you know that uh, Arcana will also work. I have to be intelligent for Arcana, though. <laughs> oh. Unfortunately, you try to uh, do the same sort of thing and find uh, this one is slightly more complicated. And it I got the Blessing of Vegas, though. Do I get to try again? Uh, actually, yes. On a religion roll, you do. Oh, that's marginally better. <laughs> you call out for Ignis's guidance, and it, it, he just goes, you should know better by now. Uh, <laughs> that is forever the voice of Ignis. 
Uh, that is Medric's turn. Silas, would you like to give it a try? Yeah. You're muted. Right. Um, I will look deep inside it and make an arcana roll. All right. Um, as you look deep inside, you, you kind of reach forward a little bit, and just with a little nudge from one finger, you kind of knock one symbol into a straight alignment, and it starts to light up. Yay. Do I understand what just happened? Not in the slightest. Okay. <laughs> so I'm not going to try to copy whatever he just did. The problem is, like, he's he's going about it from a different angle. For him, it's more, these are symbols of power. For you, it's, these are symbols of meaning. And the two aren't compatible notions. Uh, that is Silas's turn. Annie. I will make another religion roll. No. It appears that this is an entirely different religion. Or the symbols are coded differently. Maybe there's an off by one error. You're not really sure. Uh, and I will give Silas advantage. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. This is what I wanted to do. Uh, okay. And actually, technically, it is there. Uh, as uh, coming from around the corner, fairly silently, but you're aware of it because it's not making its presence hidden at all, is another one of those large spiders like you had just fought. Fire lights up around it. And once again, uh, actually, it's right into the room. Uh, once again, it will take a bead, this time on Annie and on Medric. It is a dexterity saving throw. Ooh, that's not good. <laughs> no, it's not. And he steps to the side and Medrick takes it in the face. <laughs> I mean, he's technically built for that at the moment, so it's not really that bad. Uh, and, oh, there's your dexterity save. Well, you know, uh, actually, Annie saved quite well. Uh, Annie takes six fire damage and kind of steps slightly out of the way. The rest hits Medrick square in the face, but it kind of washes over him. Damage. So you also take six fire damage. <laughs> Uh, oh shit! <laughs> that was so they both took six. Yes. Yeah. In the end, uh, they both took half damage. Oh yeah, yeah. Reasons. yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of weird, but that's the way it goes. Uh, okay, uh, that one went. So it is. Oh, did those not sort? This didn't sort. Uh, okay, that one. Why is that not? See, now it's just yeah. sorting in random order for me. What the hell's going on here? No, uh, that's, that's, that's the right order. Is that the right order? Yep. Annie, then Weave Walker, then Medric, then Silas. You just moved it to Medric's turn. Okay. Why am I not computing? So basically, that? the top one is the current turn. Okay, yeah, no, it's counting down and it's rolling. Okay, yeah, duh. All it's right. a loop. Yeah, it's a loop. <laughs> Medric, what would you like to try to do? Just a so the spiritual weapon was just gone, so I'll recast it. Actually, no, um, not yet. First, I will cast Cure Wounds at level two, because I'm looking a little bit like shit. Okay. You cannot cast two level spells on the same turn. Yeah, mm -hmm. you won't be able to cast spiritual weapon this turn. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'll cast it later. Right now, my HP is more important. <laughs> yep. Just the way you said it was that you were going to do it. So. You are close to potentially getting this crystal to re-energize. Mm -hmm. But I'm also close to dying. <laughs> that is also true. <laughs> but, oh, do I want? Do I want to chance it? That's up to you. <laughs> I will remember my training and try to feel the energies around the crystal that like they did say they were like mind crystals so I'll try to feel like any kind of energy and which way I should like manipulate it with my mind to try to light it so it, like that would be like an insight okay 
go up the inside. Because I actually have a bonus to inside. <laughs> <laughs> As you move beyond the understanding and work more off your intuition, work more off trying to understand how you feel about what's happening, you start to feel confused, but at the same time, some of this kind of makes sense. You're just not quite grasping it. You have learned that insight is a skill that can be used to manipulate this. You just didn't successfully do so. Uh, Silas. Do I still have movement? Uh, yes, actually. Get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he dashes across the room. Fair enough. Uh, now it makes it Silas's turn. Yes, Silas is going to try Arcana again. All right. All right. And as you look in on the on the uh, the the symbols, trying to understand what Medric was babbling about about feeling things. And just go, but it's just a formula. It's just a calculation. It just needs to be adjusted here and here and here. And you make those slight adjustments, and the thing lights up and glows. Once Woo! again, the light fills the room. But two things happen this time, a little bit differently than before. One, you do receive all of your hit points back. And two, the creature is destroyed. Within the effect of this particular space, it seems as though they cannot withstand when these things are lit. Yay. Nice. It's 2.30 now. <laughs> I am starting to sweat a little bit. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I hate to do that, but we have had a pretty good long session, uh, yeah. which I think was pretty good. We are in a good position. You guys have learned a few things. I might suggest yeah. that you write a few of those things down so that when we start up, you'll be aware of the, the things you've learned. Mm -hmm. um, but we will return with part two of this fight next week. And I believe, despite the bleary eyedness of the beginning, this is going to work for us. So we'll be starting again at 1030 again next week, 1030 a.m. Atlantic time. Adjust your local time zone appropriately. Until then, uh, you can also find this up on YouTube. I will endeavor to get this up much faster. The fact that I have the rest of the day to myself. I might even get it up today. Who knows? Find that at youtube.com slash ENCAF1. You can also find us on uh, Facebook, facebook.com slash LOTDI. Is that right? I think that's right. At the very so. least, you can find us Legends of the Drowned Isles on Facebook, and you can also look for Watchers of the Drowned Isles. And I feel like I'm going to post a few things. I might even post, I don't know, maybe the letter. How about the letter? I'll post H's letter to A. Yeah. And, uh, and see how that goes. Uh, until then, I want to thank my players. Uh, anything else we should say? I forget how we do this. I'm, I, I am definitely sweating. I mean, you can have the, the Facebook thing. So It's true. Uh, we will put a link in, uh, in the page and in the Watchers group, as well as in the YouTube, to the artist uh, who's done some great art. And I look forward to paying him many more dollars to make many mm. more arts because they are beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if we can help somebody out, that's great. Until yeah. then. It's uh, all about helping everybody out right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, until then, I want to thank my players for for uh, joining me on this adventure. And we will see. We need a sign off. Do we have a sign off? Does anybody have a good line we can give as, a, as an out? I don't think so. Not <laughs> at the moment. We will think on that. <laughs> we are getting a little tired. That's fair. <laughs> Have a great week, folks. We'll see you again next time. Now, if I got to hit the button, let's hit the button. <laughs>